liaison to uh, continue with the public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Because I had missed too many. Oh. Oh, you can still sit. You, you, you can still sit here. You don't have to recuse oh, yourself. Okay. You just, just can't, can't vote. vote. Okay. Good enough. Um, as noted, uh, Cliff and Irfan both cannot vote on this project right. as as it is. Uh, Again, I'm good. And Kelly seen it. I'm good. Excellent. Awesome <laughs> job, Kelly. Yeah, I did what I was supposed to do. So hey, there before hey. us. <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was a little big. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. All right. Where we left off was discussing. <coughs> uh, do we have a motion to vote to open the hearing? I will move to open the hearing. Second. I'll second. Frank, your name back sideways, Frank. Fran. 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 Sorry, Fran. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Look at nay. Abstains. Discussion. The motion carries. The <coughs> hearing is now open or reopened. Uh, where we left off was discussing the FCD. Printed these on my own printer and they're a little bit shaky. We met last uh, on February 12th. We did not have discussion because we do not have voting members. We do now. And um, I'm sorry. Older plans and newer plans mixed together. <coughs> so FCD is a flexible community development aspect of the plan. Is item I under detailed discussion? Does everyone have that uh, in front of them? Mm -hmm. uh, Elaine, should we discuss in particular how detailed should we get in this part of the discussion? I think if this is the first discussion of the affordable housing component, we might be up and explain what they're what they're looking for. Is there an issue? Um, as far as I know, the only thing for us to explain is that we plan to give uh, give cash for the uh, for the for two lots, I think, or three yeah. lots. I think. So yes, two affordable. Two lots. Lots. It's at the discretion of the board whether you accept the funds or the mm -hmm. work. And uh, in Elaine's notes, it mentions that uh, we accept payment over, did you say 20? Uh, I had recommended 20, uh, dividing it by 20. Is that something that uh, fits your schedule as far as construction? Uh, any discussion on, on that regard in I, payments? I have a question, <coughs> not necessarily for your um, application, <coughs> but for this in general. What are the relative merits of one approach or the other from the town's perspective? The intent was to actually create units. Mm -hmm. And so on the negative side, it doesn't create units. It puts the burden on the town to potentially create units if it wants to, or it can use the funds uh, to retain existing units. So the funds give the town some flexibility in using it to create new units or to preserve existing units. Uh, requiring the developer to do it means that two units will actually be built. Mm -hmm. So just uh, another piece of that same question. This money goes to the town and is managed how? It goes into a trust fund mm -hmm. that's established pursuant to a statute that allows towns to do this and mm -hmm. it's managed by a board. The Affordable, the housing, board. The Afford affordable housing Trust Fund Board, which is an appointed it, board. Are they active? Do they we? have a meeting scheduled in March. Ah. Right. Well, that's different than the Commissioner of Trust Funds. Right, okay. yes. Okay, so they do meet at least as often as needed or regularly? I they have haven't no met, they haven't met for some time, but they do have a meeting scheduled. Um, do we, can, can we I just get some information on how much money we have, um, who's on the board, um, what their priorities are, or maybe just maybe ask somebody from that committee to come give us some insight on um, how they manage that money and um, what their priorities are and if money or units. I mean, not this time, right? We're going to decide tonight. Because we do have this interaction right. and what happens uh -huh. next. I'd just like to understand that piece better. 
Mm -hmm. One of the things historically and, and kind of the position I always took is my understanding, and Elaine, correct me if I'm wrong, that based on the age of many of the residents in the affordable housing are a little bit older in age, um, that, you know, looking at it being closer, having more affordable housing closer to town where there's more activity may make more <coughs> sense than having it remote location. Yeah, I don't disagree that there's some some um, factors to consider yeah. in, in that, yes. Yeah, but I think one of the things is, I, it, it's been so long since we looked at the fund and did anything, I, it might be time to actually start building some units. Well, sure. Right, Chair, if I may. Piggyback on your comment, I'd like to understand what they've actually purchased in the last, let's call it three years, and what's their vision for the next three to five years? Because outside of this particular right. proponent or applicant, there have been a number that have come right. by this board in the last few years, all very willing to give the cash, mm -hmm. and maybe we're scrolling it away to, John, your point, you know, finding things that are in town, but I can't recall, at least in my recollection that's been in front of this board in the last three years that they've purchased a number of units. So I think we've been accumulating funds into the trust. I'm just not sure what the, what the vision is for that. And I would like to kind of be cognizant of that going forward. Mm -hmm. Not that I would necessarily influence it, but I think it's a factor to be considered. Okay. I think part of it is that we, um, uh, Amy, <coughs> uh, I think part of it is that we now have a acceptable level of affordable stock mm -hmm. and that uh, I remember from previous discussions uh, that was one of the reasons that we would accept a, a payment um, and then the other side of that discussion is we did earmark some property on Fruit Street for this kind of construction but then it was kind of decided well that's kind of far away from the center of town and kind of counterproductive as far as getting older people to stores and, and businesses um, kind of getting a little bit far away from our original discussion here with Amy. Oh, and I, was then just, David. I was just going to, I did look up this weekend um, who's on the Affordable Housing Trust Board, and it's Aman Hadri, Beth Malloy, Angela Iaconi Radelli, and Parvathi Rangali, and Todd Sisteri is the rep from the Board of Selectmen. So the, there is a committee, but it sounds like they've not met. Um, and also, we have met our affordable housing goal, and we're projected to still meet it through 2020, so I'm okay. comfortable accepting the payment at this time. But I would like to know, just for future reference, how much money is in that pot and how they're. Yeah, you know, I, I'm sorry if I'm taking are. your <laughs> your particular proposal down That's the garden right. path a little bit, but it felt like an important That's thing. That's what I was just going to kind of build up where you were going, <coughs> Miro, is that I would suggest that can we add this as a future um, agenda item? Yep. And because we only have a half hour yep. with, yep. with these guys. Yes. Sure, sure. So should we schedule that now or just ask them to? We'll look at. We'll note it. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah. Mr. Nation, you had something to add other than that. I don't think so. Uh, 20 payments is... Looking for a positive vote. <coughs> so, I mean... Move forward. Right. Next thing on under, unless there's any other discussion about uh, FCD... Should we just vote that piece of it? Because that's a specific vote. Is that right? At the end of the outline, we have uh, two votes to take. So. Okay, you have some findings and some votes. And should we take comments from the public on the, the FCD, too? Uh, is there anyone in the public that wants to discuss it? Nope. Huh. Uh, historical features, item J. Uh, we noted that there are previous homes there and then one home is, is staying. Uh, is there any other historical aspects that we should be aware of or have questions about? Outside of the classic vehicle. Yeah, outside yeah. of the classic <laughs> car on site. The first thing that comes to mind. <laughs> David Paul wanted that vehicle. <laughs> uh, final picture of it. Uh, beta issues. Um, uh, Phil's not here today. Anyone from Beta representing them? Or Phil said he had no issues. Right. right. And uh, <coughs> uh, discuss standards and plan revisions to be made. Uh, Discuss condition with approval with applicant, public comment. Um, is there feedback from the CONCOM as yet? Or is that um, I know you're applying with the. No, we're, we're, we're in the process. And, um, you know, we'll be working you know, together with the planning board and the CONCOM at the same time. And, you know, 
So we're waiting for Vernal Pool uh, inspection, which is another couple of weeks or whatever. That would be mostly concerning the, the northernmost lower part of the property. Uh, um, just the, the entire Vernal Pool, just to confirm that it's, you know, where it's flagged and, and the, the, the existing, the new wetland line is very similar to the old one. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's not a carbon copy, but it's very, very similar. Mm -hmm. uh, does anyone have any comments about uh, items 9, 10, standards and plan revisions to be made, conditions of approval, I can, I'll read the conditions of approval if, if unless there's discussion beforehand. <coughs> Uh, well, there's two open issu issues for us to resolve, I think, and that is the, um, the stormwater plan for the open space, okay, and also um, the 100-foot uh, buffer to adjoining property. So, I mean, I'll wade in on one <coughs> of them. Mm -hmm. um, it appeals to my sensibilities that um, there needs to be a compelling reason to grant uh, a, uh, an allowance on the 100-foot buffer to adjoining properties as opposed to um, their, the applicant stating, we've seen this a couple of times, not just not, not necessarily here, but just stating that the adjoining property like a, a rod and gun club wouldn't have any reason to mind. So I, my feeling, my personal feeling is that there ought to be a compelling reason uh, for each applicant that comes before us for us to consider um, any minimization of that buffer that's in the bylaw um, and not just because the town has the property next door and maybe the town won't care. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so I'd like to know if there are compelling reasons that we need to ha have, but I don't know, you know, my voice is one voice on this board. Um, if there are compelling reasons why we need to co contemplate um, some portion of that buffer not being 100 feet. Yeah. Well, yeah, this, so if we can keep it 100 feet away, uh, if we do that, then we, we go through a, it's, um, it's, a, it's a ledge face that's, you know, that I think that, that we're trying to preserve. Okay. We're trying to preserve all of those features that the rough now, mm -hmm. you know, ledge features. Um, and that's just one of them. That, so is so, that the entire length of the buffer that you need the, well, you're at, uh, seeking well, the waiver on? In order to make all the curves, so we have to go through it at one point, mm -hmm. but then to make the curve, you know, it kind of sweeps around. So, I mean, it is, it's, we're staying away as much as we possibly can. Okay. And we're trying to, to bring the, the road basically with the existing features uh, so we don't go through steeper areas and we don't require any large cuts or fills. So that was part of my question too. Did I understand correctly that by using the existing road that that takes you into that, into that buffer? Correct, yeah. Okay, all right, I appreciate that. So is there any comment from the public? Last chance, last call. Um, <coughs> now we need to discuss. Um, Mr. Chair, you, Mr. Chair, just sure. to follow up on uh, that question, how many lots are we talking about where the buffer would be um, needed waived? I think. It's the roadway. Uh, uh, the area where the buffer is waived, it's 200 feet of a road. Uh, 200 feet. But okay. there's no lots over there, and there will be no structures within okay, the, thank you. Of the, the southwest the corner. Thanks. Um, some of these items are a part of the uh, open space um, sure. OSLPD. Um, the special permit shall be granted only if the planning board finds each of the following um, acceptable. The development <coughs> meets the purpose of an open space and landscape preservation development as described. The development standards contained uh, have been met. The common space, the common open space is designed in accordance with the standards set forth. The common open space is designed in accordance with all standards set forth in um, chapter and law. The parcel could be developed as an unconventional subdivision under existing local, state, and federal land use regulations, which is something we, we've decided. Uh, correct, Elaine? Mm -hmm. um, and 
then the open space and landscape preservation development provides for efficient use and delivery of municipal and other services and infrastructure, infrastructure as we just described, and it will come out in the conditions uh, about the sidewalk and uh, the uh, horse trailer turnaround section, uh, especially. Um, so uh, the findings that. Um, <coughs> item A, find that the development standards com contained in state law 210-112.A have been met, um, and find that the special permit criteria have been met, um, and find that the use is in harmony with the general purpose and intent of zoning. If, if these things are acceptable to the board, um, or if you feel we need more discussion, I'd like to hear some feedback from fellow board members. Uh, David, if you I'm all set, thanks. So the question goes back to the stormwater question, which is part of the 210-106, I think. Um, so that is an open question for us to determine um, before we vote. Um, and I, um, somewhere in there I saw a percentage of the open, uh, is there a percentage of the open space that stormwater is acceptable? It's a maximum of 5%. It, I, I know I had seen some there. So um, that's part of the bylaw. We wouldn't have to put that in our decision because it's a, it's a fixed maximum anyway. <coughs> Unless you want it lower. Unless we want it lower. Right. And we're within the 5%. Uh, so I don't know that we know that, right? This is not a definitive plan. <coughs> so I guess we're going so, on the assumption that. So I think so we just need to make sure that you know we understand. And we should at least know how this board feels about is 5% as stated in the bylaw something we're comfortable with? What is the percentage of the open space to the developed space in this? For an open space plan is 50. 50. So, so Muriel, in um, item six under stormwater management, uh, I think covers your concerns, but you don't mention going anything other than five percent. So I think I think we're covered yeah. as far as. So I guess uh, I guess that I would propose that. Um, that we maintain the integrity of the bylaw by holding to the 50% open space availability without stormwater, which leaves 3.5% um, to work with in the definitive design for the developer. Does that jive with your notes here, Elaine? I, I don't think that's. I've done the math. Well, that's well uh, so yeah. presumably, presumably. Th those numbers were correct. It, so we could say it differently, so that at least 50% of the open space is maintained. Um, uh, I'm sorry, the requirement for 50% of the develop the parcel to be maintained as open space is kept um, with full integrity, and then um, there could be an allowance for stormwater management in uh, any percentage of open space above 50%. Does that make sense to people? Does it does it step outside of our, our jurisdictional reach <coughs> as far as the bylaw is concerned to go beyond the the fifty percent? No, no. I, essentially, what I'm saying, what I'm proposing, is that we hold to the fifty percent requirement, yeah. and where there's a little bit more, that's to the good, that's to the benefit of the town, sure. um, and it it I'm comfortable with that overage being used in a you know functional utilitarian fashion for the development as far as stormwater management if they can need do it, they can do it as they want right, right. right. oh right essentially is what you're saying now, as long as that 50 percent as long as uh, right. that's right. that was that's the that's the proposal wow. i'm making for is clarification that, can you which of these how would you add would you add to item six on the stormwater management specifically <coughs> what I do not have that particular piece of paper in front of me. Where, one, what page is that? One question I have. Are you comfortable oh, that you can meet that requirement? Yeah. This is, I can design the uh, 
um, detention ponds yet, but uh, because I would like to, to have a footprint to work with. Uh, but this is not how the bylaw is written, uh, because the detention ponds will not be any artificial looking structures. They're basically depressions in the ground where the, the water will collect. So being the bylaw is actually written that we may, but we're not compelled to allow correct. that. Correct. Yes. Right. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Um, so we're, you know, we're looking. You're looking for an allowance, and we're looking to find a way to agree with that. Is there a way that you can reasonably predict being able to design your stormwater within the proposal I outlined? Within the three and a half percent that are over the. Mm -hmm. um, you aren't going to use the open will, space entirely. I try. I'm not trying to maximize the size but, of the pond. But you can use other but pieces Muriel, of the property, is that right? Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me just take control of the meeting for a second. Mm -hmm. If you have a change okay. to what, we, what we're asking for, what we're putting out, can you list that out specifically what you're asking? So I am talking specifically about 210-106, where we have to determine whether or not we're going to agree stormwater in the open space. You just read it. Right, but as far as the order conditions. You just conditions, read it. Right. That's, so we have to determine. As far as what would you like to add to the order conditions? If they comply. Well, if the board agrees with that proposal, then we would add it to the order of conditions. Right. So, so I don't know if the proposal is. It, my proposal is <clears throat> that the applicant ha can have flexibility to utilize the open space for stormwater management um, in the acreage that is above the 50%. Uh, that he they are mandated to have within the open space development bylaw. So I have a question. So are they not allowed to use that if we don't? Yeah. Are they allowed to use the open space for stormwater drainage? They need a waiver from you. Okay. It's a, it's a, a waiver from us okay. to allow that. Um, question. <coughs> question for the developer. <laughs> if we are to kind of minimize uh, the amount of open space that you're going to be using. So we will, so we use the 3%. Is that going to then result in just a deeper detention basin? Something that's going to look a lot more like a detention basin? Or is it something like if we were to keep it shallower, maybe have it just look like a swale, which is kind of unnoticeable except when it fills up? Well, one option would be that, yeah. It could also reduce the amount of open space to 50 percent and create a parcel for stormwater management. Yeah, so that's what I was going to ask, right? <laughs> it, w weren't they initially, um, wasn't it written initially at 53 percent? They just said it was 53.5 percent, which is right. where I got the that number I was talking right. about. <coughs> <coughs> so, so, but you're proposing that they reduce it to 50? I'm just proposing that they maintain the integrity of 50% of the open space being free of stormwater management. 50% of the parcel. Yeah, thank you. 50% of the parcel as open space. Um, and I'm, I'm fine being knocked off my point. I'm well, just, that was my proposal. I have a kind of a related question. Sorry for one more. Mm -hmm. um, so normally, do we show detention ponds on the plan before we approve it? They're shown conceptually. This is a conceptual <coughs> plan for the special okay. permit before the, it's been detailed, <coughs> designed. So it's shown conceptually. And just, I think we may have gone over this, but conceptually, how many will there be? Conceptually, we showed three in previous three. iterations. Um, you know, once I start designing the actual detention pond, I will figure out how many and what. And those, none of those three, just to be clear, None of those three are in the open space right now. Uh, right now, they are in the open space. Okay. Yeah, I, I just want to. I just want to be clear on what we're talking about here because I'm a, I'm a little unclear. <laughs> so I just so they're proposing 53 percent open space for us right now, and the detention basins are currently within that open space. Correct. And but we don't know how large the the basins are going to be at this point. No, we don't. Okay. So that's where you're coming from, making sure that they keep it, we, the integrity of the 50%. So I guess what, in order to move it along, what I think the desire of the board is to maximize the use of open space. Right. 
but there's also a recognition that you haven't designed it yet. Right. So what I would like to put forth is maybe we use Muriel's wording and let the applicant know that if in the designing of the retention basin, it looks like it might be detrimental, such as what you brought up, mm -hmm. that now all of a sudden it's deeper, et cetera, that we would entertain, can we do that, Elaine? Mm -hmm. Entertain at a future point doing a waiver to permit some of the space, and at least this way, if we're granting the waiver, we know how much we're granting. So yep. what we want to do is we want to encourage you to use the 3.5, uh, but if you come back and you think us as a board will look at it and said it's worth a little bit extra to make it look Correct. less right. obnoxious, for lack of a better term, or it's detrimental, or detrimental right. that we would be open, <coughs> right. yeah. open to that. So how do we approach that in regard to the order of conditions? I think we can use the, Elaine, do you have any suggestions on wording? Uh, something, I mean, we could correct the exact words okay. later, but something to the effect that 50% of the open space uh, is intended to remain undisturbed, um, and the stormwater management could conceptually be located on 3.5% subject to further review by the board at the definitive stage and the review of the impacts of that on the open space. Mm -hmm. And that would that would subsequently lead us to the special permitting that they're looking for in the first place. Right? right. So it gives them the flexibility to go forward with the design, and they know that it's important to you. So. Right. Okay. Now, is this something we need to vote mm -hmm. as a change or an addition? You can incorporate it into the wording when you include the conditions. Right. So that would be under, like, say, item six. Make an item F. I would think item uh, one own. one B, where you talk oh. about the waiver. <coughs> Yeah, it's that last paragraph that says oh. we them subject to additional review of the impacts anyway. So it's where you're actually granting the waiver, you would say that. All right. So do we need to uh, have an official motion to accept uh, the revision? I think first you want to, um, the, the vote occurs in two phases. So the first is to make the findings, and the second is to grant it with conditions. And this would be one of the conditions that you vote when you get to that second vote. Is that okay with you, Mara? Yeah, perfect. Okay. So that brings us back to uh, step one. Uh, findings. Um, <coughs> motion to accept the uh, findings about the OSLPD. So moved. <laughs> second. Uh, any discussion? So we did have one question, and I don't have any objections, but we did have one open question about line of sight for the traffic and traffic. Did we look at the line of sight? I think that's a proposed condition. The site just has been looked at. Um, yeah, um, Liz from Garrett had said that it was on a plan, but uh, I don't see it on this plan. But uh, I, I, have, I have a good bit of experience with, line, with site distance, and there's yeah. plenty of site distance on the project. And the, the definitive plan required, they required to show that anyway. Okay, so. that, that's what I was going to ask, is that that would be a detail that gets fleshed out in the, in the definitive plan. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so the motion before us is the OSLPD uh, item 1A through F uh, being acceptable. All in favor say aye. 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 Any against? Nay. Any abstentions? That's oh, right, people that can't vote. Can't vote. Oh, yeah. I have <laughs> It's so all those who can vote. Uh, it's items A, B, C, right? Not us. Yeah. Through F. Correct. Yeah. Right. right. Findings are huge, too. Page two. A, B, and C. Find the development A, B, and C. Yeah. Motion passes. And make a note that we had two people that were not voting. So uh, I, I must change my second because I'm abstaining. So oh, good point. I, I couldn't second the. the, the <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a, who made the vote, David? I'll I'll second it. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that vote. Do we need to revote? Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> All those in favor that can vote, say aye. 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 Against. Abstains. Aye. Abstain. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, next item is discussing the FC. Um, a special permit to be granted if the proposal meets the requirements of the bylaw. Um, the proposal, we are voting to, about the FCD to see if the proposal meets the requirements <coughs> of the bylaw. Uh, find out the use is in harmony with the general purpose of intent of the zoning bylaw. That's on page two of the document. Um, we have a motion to accept uh, as in Elaine's notes, the payment plan of 20 payments and the uh, applicant's desire to pay 20 payments. I'll make a motion to uh, to grant the waiver to accept a cash payment in lieu of units. I'll second the motion. Motion has been made and seconded all in discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 All against say nay. And no abstentions. Abstain. Two members not voting. Uh, motion passes. And I think uh, we now vote. It's the close the hearing or the oh yes yes I should read the condition too I'm missing page four for some reason oh, here it is all right <laughs> Elaine do you want to go through the condition that would be great. Thank you. Sure. Uh, the first one is the granting of the, um, the waivers, the <coughs> perimeter buffer requirement, and the uh, retention funds in the open space as discussed. The second is the definitive plan will contain a maximum of 24 building lots based on what you've already reviewed. Uh, the third condition would be um, the definitive subdivision plan will show uh, the open space to be created and um, some other information they will need to submit, identify who's going to open the, uh, own the open space and a draft conservation restriction if, if it's going to be required. Um, the definitive subdivision plan will show the location of the town-owned parking area on Whisper Way. <coughs> um, due to the size and location of the wetland resource areas, the applicant is encouraged to file a notice of intent concurrently with CONCOM so that you can both review it at the same time uh, to allow for maximum coordination. Uh, condition number six is regarding stormwater management. Uh, no additional runoff volume will be deposited onto any abutting property, including land across Wood Street without the written permission of the property owner. And if they have such permission, it needs to be submitted with the plan. Um, the drainage system shown on the definitive plan shall be designed to ensure that the water quality of the stormwater runoff is not detrimental to the wetlands and receiving water bodies. The stormwater management facilities shall be designed to appear like natural landforms and integrated with the topography as much as possible. The definitive plan uh, will include an operation and maintenance <coughs> plan for all elements of the stormwater management system, and it identifies the items that have to be included in that plan. Um, an erosion and site control plan will be submitted with the definitive <coughs> subdivision plan as well. You like to take over? Me? Thank you. I can take over. Okay, number seven. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> the definitive subdivision plan shall now show the limit of clearing, both temporary for construction and permanent, required for all work in the subdivision, including homes, septic systems, driveways, lawns, roads, and stormwater management system components. Eight, proof of secured easements shall be provided by the applicant with the definitive subdivision plan submitted for all work proposed for the land under separate ownership and or off-site. Nine, no open space, no cut easements or other restricted areas shown in the definitive subdivision plan shall be used for storage and construction of vehicles, building materials, stockpile loam, or other materials during construction. The, number 10, the definitive, the definitive subdivision plan shall show the location of where earth and construction materials will be stockpiled and on site during construction. Number 11, the definitive subdivision plan shall be designed to be consistent with an approved concept plan. Number 12, that the definitive subdivision plan shall now shall show the design and construction of a sidewalk on Wood Street along the frontage of the property. Number 13, the applicant shall work with the town to design a parking area for horse trailers within the open space area on the northeast corner of the property. The area shall be no, shown on the definitive subdivision plan. The FCD condition is number one, and it's one <coughs> and one, uh, but it's several parts. 
The applicant shall, see, shall contribute funds to the Town of Hoppington Affordable Housing Trust Fund in lieu of constructing or providing affordable housing unit on or off site. The fee shall be calculated following the guidelines below. However, the final calculated sales price per unit must be verified by the Department of Housing and Community Development as meeting the qualifications for inclusion on the Chapter 40B subsidized housing inventory. Uh, then there are sections A through D. Do we need to read these specifically? Or I can if you want. It's not necessary, but uh, I think D is important. The timing of payment. The timing of payment shall be made according to the following schedule. The calculated amount shall be divided by 20 and a payment made prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy for the first 20 dwelling units <coughs> in the project. We have a motion to discussion. Accept. Yes. So I just for clarity, I just wanted to. I think Elaine probably would be the best person to answer this question. Sure. But I was kind of concerned. With most of these conditions are for the planning and the building and construction. The the only one that I see is after what I call the developer leaving is the the maintenance of the stormwater. Does that sound oh, correct? We had some discussion on that. That will be reviewed at the definitive stage. Yeah, as no, well. but I mean, that's so. kind of like the only appropriate one here. All the other ones are kind of like construction. Design, well, standard, construction. mostly standard to most projects. So. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm just for clarity. I think I'm good. Yeah. If I may, that, that I think we did make some discussion about that on the last meeting that we had about it. Was that who would take over that? I think that was the <coughs> about Chamberlain Wayland and the comments from John Westerly. And, and uh, in general, the town doesn't have the bandwidth to, so it's, it's a further discussion when the definitive plan is prepared. Any other points of discussion? Any motion to accept the conditions as read? Second. Moved and seconded. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Against? And abstain. Abstain. <laughs> so, pass this. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, gentlemen. <coughs> uh, I want to make a motion to close the public hearing. I will move to close the public hearing. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. So carried. Now, a little, couple of minutes late. Uh, public hearing proposed zoning bylaw and zoning map amendments every year. Uh, we are grateful to the members of SAC for spending time and uh, coming up with um, items to be considered uh, that changes our zoning bylaws. And this is, for those who may not be as aware of it, is we're almost as a board controlled by the zoning bylaws. We're, we're, we have to operate within those bylaws. So it's important that if there are issues out there that need to be addressed, that uh, having this methodology is how we make those changes based on community input. So can I have, uh, we're gonna open the public hearing, can we get a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. So carried. Elaine, do you want to touch the first couple of ones, which are more? Do we, uh, do we want to ask the uh, chairman of the zoning? Well, I'm going okay. to, but just for the uh, administrative ones, and then we'll turn it over to the Mr. Catino and to Frenny and to talk about the the more substantive ones. Okay, all right. And um, Amy asked about a PowerPoint, so we do have a PowerPoint. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, so. <coughs> The first one is the special permit duration, and that involves um, a statutory change. So the statute changed, and now we have to change the bylaw to conform with it. So previously, special permits could uh, be in effect for two years before they're exercised, and the legislature voted to give people an additional year. So uh, now the special permits can be approved up to three years. And the zoning bylaw amendment would reference the statute so that if they change it again, we won't have to change the bylaw. It will just reference whatever the statute says. The second mm -hmm. one is another change to the statute that um, previously um, there's protection provided for people when they get a building permit or a special permit for changes to the zoning bylaw. So if you receive a building permit 
uh, in advance of a zoning change you're pr that used to be protected for six months now you have a year to exercise that permit before it's affected by the zoning change so that's another legislative change that we would change the bylaw to match and reference the statute so we wouldn't have to amend it again when it changes and the third is um, I'm not sure when the statute changed uh, I know that the town adopted its fine in 1978 or earlier and so the current fine for a zoning uh, violation is $100 a day, and the change would reference the maximum allowed in the statute, which is $300 a day. So those are the three administrative. And items. we'll open up to the board for discussion, and the public for discussion. I just have a question. Is the wording, does the wording allow in that one for the change to follow the statute, yes. or does by putting the 300, is the $300 going in? I believe it would reference the statute as well. So that's one thing that Zach recommended that just so that they won't the have this kind of housekeeping thing we wouldn't have right. to look at again. That's correct. Okay. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Does it specifically give the board discretion in how much it's going to allow, uh, how much we can penalize per day? Let's, I mean, if we didn't want to go for the full 300, if we wanted to go for $10 a day or whatever, do, do we have that discretion? The zoning enforcement officer does have the discretion mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. Same with special permits. The board also has the discretion to approve a special permit still for two years if it feels like there's something there that it wants to limit to two years. So it's up to that maximum. And to that point, if I may, is that, as John indicated on one of our meetings, that that doesn't mean that we're going to find anybody. That just means that we are, we are able to and go up to the $300. Um, so it could be absolutely nothing. But again, you know, it's to the discretion. So, thank you. And each day is a separate offense. Yes. <clears throat> Any comments on the first three from the uh, public? Okay. Do we um, do we want to? Well, I can go through the whole public hearing, then come back and and, and vote or decide. Do we need to vote today on all of them, on a recommendation? Do if we you don't want to go ahead with some of them, it would be helpful for us to know in preparing the warrant. Okay. okay. <coughs> the language itself, you still have time to work on the language. Okay. Uh, the next item is. I recommend we vote one by one. Uh, I'm gonna. Well, can we let's vote these as a block. A chunk. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah. you've already yeah. voted to submit them into the warrant. Right. right. So now you're now you're voting. On the recommendation. recommendation. On the recommendation. Okay. Yes. Can yes. I get a motion? So I would make a motion to recommend the first three um, zoning articles. Second. Any discussion? Any discussion from the public? We'll take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? So carried. Next item, um, amend section 210.125, conversion of residential property, reduce the maximum number of rental units and require owner occupancy. Mr. Catino, you want to come up and explain? Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome. Greetings from the Sony Advisory Committee. Yeah, this one was basically because people were converting um, exactly to the letter of the bylaw and sometimes resulting in uh, less than desirable uh, dwellings where um, <coughs> Uh, they would situate them just so that there would be one wall attached and other and other things. So we decided to um, uh, make this so that um, it just made it easier for people that wanted to do conversions for in law apartments or uh, I guess we call them in law apartments, but you don't know nowadays it could be any any family member that wants to still. Uh, live with the rest of the family. And that, with the stipulation that it's it's owner occupied. Right. That that's not also non transferable, right, <coughs> John? Um, uh, it, it's tra it's transferred with the same stipulation. Isn't it? So in this particular bylaw, it it is transferable. So it's a permanent change. So it's different than the accessory family oh, right, dwelling. Accessory so dwelling. They're very similar, yes. uh, but the conversions one isn't limited to who would, you know, whether it's a relative or, but it, and that's But, it, but it does have to be owner-occupied. It does. And what happens in, on the, in the event that it's not owner-occupied? 
That would be a zoning enforcement action. There could be a fine levy. About $300. $300. Oh, $300. <laughs> I wanted to bring clarity to that. That's why I'm asking. And we do have uh, a letter from town council related to uh, this provision and to 210-126. Elaine, do you want to touch on that? So they do uh, note that um, the one thing that uh, the town can do that we do currently is to regulate form of ownership. So we can't say it's for rental purposes anymore. So apparently in 1991 that was acceptable, but it is no longer today. One thing I want to throw out there is the, the owner occupancy kind of requirement. To, I see that as being really difficult to police. If, you know, yeah. I, mean, I, I don't have an issue with, with requiring it, but I don't see how we're ever going to be able to go in and enforce if somebody wants to use that accessory in law apartment for an Airbnb. Um, <laughs> I don't know how we would stop it. Uh, and I don't necessarily see that as a negative thing. Uh, I haven't really thought it through, but. Good point. I, I think here in this one, it's, okay, to use the Airbnb example, you can have bit one, but I think they're trying to limit it not to have four type of units, right? Because currently you've got, it says up to four rental like mm -hmm. units. Now what they're trying to do is maximize or put the maximum at two for that. Now, Enforcement, totally separate issue. I think it's beyond the purview of this board per se. Mm -hmm. But fair point. I think correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Chairman, with the thought <coughs> of just pay going from four to two kind of reduces some of that sprawl. Mm -hmm. Do we have any detail on what the difficulty it is we're trying to solve? I mean, has this been a big problem in some way? Uh, well, this was brought to us um, by by uh, the ZBA. By the ZBA. ZBA, right? And I, I just don't know. I, I remember sitting through the meeting, and it didn't. I don't remember there being a big problem we were solving. It was a very, very small number of. Yeah, I don't think it's a huge. I don't think they're knocking down the door. I think it was just kind of going forward to kind of, you know, limit this or reduce this going uh, for future meetings for CBA. So I'm just gonna suggest one. My my read on a lot of things is that if it, if we're not solving a problem. You know, building our zoning enforce our zoning bylaws is not necessarily a goal to just increase our zoning restrictions and, and detail and so forth. If there is an issue that we're trying to solve, then I, I feel a little differently about adding to the bylaw. Well, if I may, through the chair, there already is a bylaw that says four. Right. <clears throat> Basically, this was just to reduce it to two. Um, okay, good again. point. It wouldn't be adding yeah, to so the right. bylaw. So this was this was just a modified one. So. It just came through the CBA, so that's why we. Right. And it felt like it made sense, right? Through the it discussion with, yes. with the group, that we wanted to kind of just again minimize the amount of you know potential that somebody could use a unit for. So a one-family house couldn't become a four-family house. Right. It could be most it could become was a two-family home. I mixed them. Sorry, initially I mixed up this with the with the one that's coming up. I think fourth. Surprised they're not right next to each other. And I had right. sat through recently a Board of Appeals hearing on an application under this bylaw, and that's where the issue came up. I mean, they, they don't get, uh, come up that often, mm -hmm. uh, but they were concerned about the lack of controls and the potential, you know, downside of having a four-family home with no uh, no owner occupancy there and the impact on the neighborhood uh, going forward. I think that was that was a, a concern. I, I'm a little confused. So there is a real life example that. Uh, this is st stemming from, but uh, did they take? Did someone want to take a one-family home and make it a two-family home? Is that or a four-family home? Or well, right now, you can take a one-family home. But sorry, to the chair, would you can take a one-family home and go up to four? In certain, I guess do I throw some? Oh, is it all over town, or is it just certain? Uh, anywhere. Certain but how would one do that? I mean, there's only so many bedrooms in a home. I mean, well, uh, you could have a you could <laughs> five thousand square foot home. Yeah. But wouldn't things. wouldn't that also predicate itself on the the water usage and septic capacity of the of the, of the uh, unless property. you're on town sewer, uh -huh. town, town sewer and water, right? But I mean that that that's kind of limited to the areas that we have in town anyway. 
Um, but this is this is saying that you can if, if you own a home yes, and you want to convert right. it to and a four family going, home right now you can yes. yeah. so with we're, not, we're not saying we're not expanding yeah right we're yeah. pulling it in yeah right so it, so it makes sense, sense to me that we would right. call it down exactly. to prevent that yeah, yeah i'm comfortable with that yeah so, I, I i have zero objection to some person you know wanting to maximize the use of their property personally it hasn't been a big problem yet. But the search situation through the chair, the situation that you're referring to, was it approved and then was it an, an issue in practice? I mean, is, it, is, there, is there a problem in our town right now because we don't have this law, <coughs> bylaw, a change? We have the bylaw. But if we don't have this. They're just trimming it back. Right. But is, is there a problem in the neighborhood because of it? No. This particular one was a recent example and I don't think that it exists yet. What happens is when the CBA comes to Zach with changes, we tend to look at them. Forward uh, thinking. We, we, we t tend to take them uh, with, with uh, uh, more than a grain of salt. Um, it's, uh, we, we really believe that uh, uh, when they come to us, it's to, it is to solve a problem. They may have had some issues. And, and, uh, so, so through yeah. the chair, we, we could wait and discuss this for the next time, yeah. right? Yeah. Even though we, we could still have our public input, though. Yeah. Any discussion, anybody from the public would like to discuss this? Come on up. Identify yourself and your uh, address. Mr. Chairman, Chuck Joseph, 5 Benson Road in Hopkinton. Um, I'm just seeking some clarification on this. And I'm thinking about the instances that I run into every day in, in my line of work. If I own, uh, if I'm on, say, Main Street, which I believe is a multi-family district, and I own a large single family, and I want to sell that property, and an investor comes in, and what I understand is that the words that are being used is we're going to cull it down from four to two. But you're also adding owner-occupied. So if I have an investor who wants to come in and buy my property and convert it to a two-family, I cannot do that as this bylaw, as I'm understanding it. And I'd like to know why that is. Secondly, I, I'd like to know what the incidences are where we've run into problems with four families, with singles being converted to four. I know I haven't run into too many of them, maybe you folks have, but I have not. And it seems to me that we're addressing a problem that doesn't exist. And that gets to Mrs. Kramer's point of view is, you know, how are we writing our bylaws? Thank you. Hmm. Any other comments? We have anybody from the Board of Appeals who can help us? I was hoping. <laughs> can we, we have somebody that used to be on the Board of Appeals? <laughs> <laughs> can he help um, us? Yeah. For next time? Can I ask a question? Through the chair. Yeah. Um, so is the intent here also then, let's say we had a large house um, to prevent, if I wanted to, going to Chuck's point, if I wanted to buy that house and convert it to a four family condo, is the intent here to not allow that? Yes. Yes. That's clearly the intent. That's exactly what this is, yeah. But we would have owner occupancy in each condo unit. Well, I believe, didn't right? they, if I, <laughs> to the chair, if I may, yeah. I think that the town council said we can't deal with the ownership part. So I think that that part has to come out already anyway. Right. The owner well, if any main requirements would require <laughs> <the> owner <laughs> occupancy anyways. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, I think that the market forces are going to um, kind of require owner occupancy uh, unless we have cash. I guess that kind of takes it away. But um, so that's, that's what we're trying to prevent is the investor okay. going to uh, for family, uh, I, I really can't speak for the for the the, the ZBA, but they, they came up and. and uh, so came why don't us. we, if I can make a suggestion, just table this mm -hmm. until we get more information. Can I just make one final sure. point from the question of how we're doing our zoning bylaws? I take a slightly different approach, say, mm -hmm. and what others had mentioned is we're trying to be proactive, not reactive. I'm sure there's very many bylaws today that we have in our documentation that are not applicable. It's there to prevent them from happening in the future. So, mm -hmm. so I'm No, I, I'm all about being proactive. Um, I do think that um, 
a lot. I guess I have, I have a very definitely have a, uh, a, a soft spot in, in my heart and a bent towards uh, being more flexible with the ways that people use their properties, but also in creating um, properties in town that would be affordable to a broader variety uh, of uh, owner or occupant. So I, I have a, a, a sort of a determined uh, notion that we should be pursuing more diversity of housing stock and more accessibility to a, a broad variety of all. And, and I don't want to cut, but since we're going to continue this and we yep. have 35 minutes left, yep. let's continue the discussion and move on to the next item or else we're going to have items pending. While we continue, I just ask for, do we have a limit of how many people can be in a, in a house, how many bedrooms per person, or currently? Why don't we put that on the list? That's, that's what no. I'll discuss. No. Seriously? Yeah. 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 Are we seriously <laughs> thinking about doing that? No, 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 no. I'm just asking if there is, because this is what. There's I'm gonna, I'm gonna set myself on fire. I think <laughs> 782 is a good number. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the next item. Uh, modify the hotel overlay district land area, and land off Parkwood Drive and South Street. Move land off Lumber Street. All right. Um, Chamber of Commerce requested that Zach review the location of a hotel overlay district in order to include areas that are viable for a hotel. As you know, we've been, you know, bylaws are, uh, are, have, bylaws are to either encourage or discourage. And it seemed that uh, in as much as much of the town has wanted to try and get a hotel in town, we wrote our bylaws point where it totally restricted our ever um, attracting any hotels to come into town. So we, we tried to modify it a little bit a few years ago. <coughs> it still didn't work. Uh, all the towns around us, Marlboro just got four of them in the last uh, 14 months. And there, there are other, other towns that are building right off of 495. But we still haven't been able to, uh, to uh, attract one. Um, you know, we did raise our hotel tax a few years ago, um, but we still didn't have a hotel to tax. But we, but just like uh, just like we, we try and keep in line with all the uh, mass general laws, we decided to go to float that one to match whatever the mass general law was. But it would really be nice to try and attract a hotel if possible at uh, in a few of these areas. To that point. Um, we were looking at the hotel overlay district and looked at areas that we had open for, for the district but realized that it was small plan. Nobody was going to build there anyway. And then other places were, were too close to residential areas. That wasn't going to work. That was going down Lumber Street. So we pulled that part back. But then we, did, then we wanted to expand it a little bit uh, in, in the Parkwood area and I believe also up on South Street. We, we, we changed it a bit. Um, but just, to, just in areas that really would be uh, suitable for a hotel and that's th that's what this is so if I may put you uh, let me just give a little yes. in intro uh, in order to get some feedback on it um, I invited Ron Kendall who's president of Buffalo Lodging it's about 50 hotels in the Northeast and Elaine and I met with them and then I took some of the uh, discuss what we kind of came out of the meeting and then I checked with two other people in the hotel industry <clears throat> and just a general reaction is and I'm taking his comments is from a hotel point of view we're basically a one horse town and that's Dell that has existing relationships and national relationships with change that get chains that can dictate rate on a local level and that the general guideline for getting financing for hotels is in this situation would be looking at a 70% occupancy rate without Dell. And we don't have as, uh, as installed a base here, and I'm looking to Elaine, correct me if I'm misquoting him, that could necessarily support that. Um, and also the thought process was more and more people don't want to eat at hotels <laughs> and that 
location wise being adjacent to or close to additional <coughs> restaurants <coughs> etc more activity that it's hard to compete with uh, hotels in Milford that may have more things around them than we have here um, and also in his analysis he thought that we were definitely kind of an under 100 hotel market uh, based on, you know, the, the amount of business that's here. And the concern is when you have one large company, a national company, the way they can dictate rates is with any of the hotel chains, if you're large enough, you can dictate a percent off whatever the rack rate is. So it's not a traditional smaller hotel smaller employer going to a hotel and saying you know we want to pay this rate they're large enough that they can dictate a percentage off a rate so if the hotel sets a rate they have to face a 40 percent or whatever that discount that's negotiated is which makes it difficult so i think the changes as we look at the changes i the reason i'm saying it is i don't want anybody to get the hope of we're going to make these changes and a year from now there's going to be a hotel uh, I think there's a lot of things that have to happen to, you know, justify <coughs> it. Um, and it's it, the other interesting thing is he did say is thanks to GPS, you know, the hotels used to have to be located on the main roads. He says their most successful ones are in shopping centers and kind of behind the shopping center because with GPS everybody knows how to get there. But, and, but having a shopping center or amenities <coughs> around it or a, or a a big plus so just as background information if I may expound on that to the chair um, as we look forward um, we were all worried about the building that was at 35 Parkwood Drive and how long it stayed at empty and that was kind of predicating on the fact of what needed to be changed in that general area since the last meeting that I recollect going forward about hotel district um it was shot down at at town meeting for multiple reasons um and one was because we couldn't we couldn't even get that building at 35 parkwood um, um renovated we now have frank and i have been um deposed as as going into uh, liaison towards the community and um, business aspect of interaction, bringing, bringing interaction between business and community. And we visited 35 Parkwood. And on doing so, they are at a 76% capacity as we sit right now. The people that drive by, I'm gonna say my land, every day, going back there, and inclusively to the, the land of, that is owned by um, Perk and Elmer. Um, the exposure for that area is, is, is quite different than four years ago. Um, and Even last year. Even yeah. last year. Um, and nobody saw the handwriting on the wall that that building was not gonna stay that way forever. Everybody thought it was gonna stay that way forever. And because it sat for so long. Um, but now we see a trend happening all in the area of 495 Beltway. And that 495 Beltway um, is what we should be really looking at as a viability to, to convert into hotel district um, if we're going to. Um, but being, that being said, the obstacles are, are, are lessening as we, as we move forward. Um, with with the 110 restaurant and and m multiple other ongoings that are going on um, I still see as I always said right from my impression about 35 Parkwood and, and that area was that um, we don't have to change what what is we have to expose what is and and the exposure is now there and that, that is going to dictate how we, how we make decisions going forward. Before, I, I don't, I'm gonna pause you. Uh, why don't you 
touch on what the changes are to the area because I think that ties in with what you're. Okay. Well, Elaine, you have the map. Oh, yeah. this, there's the first. So the, the first yeah. area is to expand the hotel uh, overlay district in the hatched area. So it extends from, it right now is a 500 foot strip parallel to 495. It would extend over to Parkwood Drive. The second one is on South Street and it's shown here in two because it's, it's long. Uh, so this is the part next to Milford. It basically would uh, cover the full length of South Street, uh, except for within 400 feet of a residential district. So the areas outlined in the yellow would become part of the hotel overlay district. Are they currently part of the hotel overlay? Only uh, on the right-hand side, but uh, I think it's number 25 through 71 are currently okay. in, the, in the district. And the third area is to remove a piece uh, off of Lumber Street that is south of the, um, basically the swim tennis club that will be built. So beyond that, uh, Zach has proposed removing <coughs> that area from that. It's across from the sportsman's club. So I do, Chair. I do have a question about the, the removing to, to ask. Um, it's kind of <coughs> hard that somebody owns some property and then you're going to tell them that they can't build something on it. So can you guys just speak to that? Well, uh, in, in response to that, I totally agree. Uh, and Mr. Richardson, can you, if you have to introduce yourself? Yeah, Scott yeah. Richardson, uh, President of the Chamber of Commerce and uh, member of the Zoning Advisory Committee. Um, and so there was a letter that I'm sure uh, Mr. Connors will speak to relative to the uh, s removing that part of that property. And uh, from the from the hotel overlay district, and we would be open to having that remain as part of the hotel overlay district. The thing we were looking to do again was to expand the district in industrial A and B, so that again the opportunity. While John is right that we don't anticipate a hotels you know going to be coming in you know tomorrow. Uh, again, if you don't enable uh, some additional zoning advantages, then you might never see one. So. so Thank you, and I guess I would just follow up with if uh, the, the Zach is amenable to that and if the planning board is amenable to that. It's not removing well, that. If I may, to the chair, no, at, at this point, we've, we've handed off the football. It's, right. a, it, it's, okay. it's our is, decision we, we now. Made a, we, we, we made, we okay. made recommendations. Then I'll, just ask the now, then I'll just ask the planning board. Now it's up to the planning board to, to tweak it as, so, as they So say. let's break it up into two. Anybody <coughs> have? Public comment? Well, well, I just want to get the discussion here. So, I'm not going to vote. We're not going to vote on it yet. Can I clarify? The part being removed is all owned by the person who wrote the letter, Mr. Connors. It's being added back. A portion You're of it is owned by someone. Just a portion of it. There are two different owners, right? Owners. Okay. Yes. For clarity. What we're saying, what you're saying now, is that you want to make an amendment to not take no. that away. No, no, no. no. it's up to us. We no, no, we we it's can decide. Now, okay. So the right. discussion yeah. is right. now amongst right. us. Right. right. As a member of public. So any discussion on that before we open it up to the public? So simply on the discussion point about not splitting the those, not taking out that property and leaving it back in the hotel. I would recommend amending anything we before to include both properties since both property homeowners uh, owners three, want three it. properties three pieces three is pieces, it three, three pieces <coughs> I'm sorry I thought it was two property owners um, where they are currently in the district and they want to remain in the district I think it makes sense to uh, accommodate that I request. agree I agree sounds like we're all in agreement yeah. a discussion from public Ma, introduce yourself and your address my name is George Connors. I'm an attorney representing the two landowners in that particular area that you are seeking or discussing being removed. That is um, Hopkins and Stone and Gardens, which is Mr. DeWolf, mm -hmm. and uh, the Three Brothers Properties Trust, which is his sons. They currently use most of that property for a landscape uh, product business, and uh, taking those out would seriously impact that. It is close as somebody alluded <coughs> to uh, some of the amenities down the street, the 110 and the uh, uh, breakfast place. Additionally, they did have a uh, interest from a national chain uh, a couple of years ago. I understand they talked to the town and the infrastructure improvements on Lumber Street were the um, thing that made it more difficult to pursue. I don't think that that may be the case now. 
in any event, they would like to keep those two properties in it where one already is. So 28 is the one that's staying in, and <coughs> 32 and 34, I believe, are the ones that you're taking out. Um, 32 is the uh, Hopkin and Stone and Gardens, as is 28, and 34 are the boys, the uh, three brothers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Mike Cavanaugh for our Salem Drive. Can you bring up this picture? The one that has the um, the north section of um, South Street on it? That one. Yeah. Um, can I go over there and talk to the to the slide? Can I point, point some stuff there. out? Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll be we'll be we'll have to repeat what you say. All right. All right. So maybe you can figure it out from uh, from here. There's a building there in the lower right hand corner that's 52 South Street. And two thirds of it right now is part of this rezoning, and one third is not. I see. Yeah, building. So, are you going to right tear here. down one third of the building? And then there's a parking lot that wraps around that, which is also not part of the actual um, hotel overlay district. So, if, if you kind of put a hotel there, and you leave the rest of the land the way it is with the, with the parking lot and stuff like that, that that overlay does not accurately reflect what you're doing. So there's a lot more area where cars will be able to park and stuff like that. So um, it's, it's not a very good representation of how close it is to my house. I mean, 52 South Street has been empty for over a decade. I get a, I get a lot of light um, in the night from that building with the lights on. So I would ask that you only do east of South Street. You, you change um, between South Street and 495 to hotel and see if you get any hotels that way before you do this map with this land that's right next to my house. And if you do the, do this map, it needs to accurately reflect what's going on there because there's a parking lot that will be used and there's one third of 52 South Street that isn't in the zoning that would actually be part of the hotel. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Elaine, just a quick question, sorry, through the chair. Is that in our package? Yes. Yes. Online? Yeah. What's it called? It's the draft maps at the end. So it's at the very end. At the very end. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, could I ask a quick question? Yes. Um, regarding the, uh, the area that we want to remove from the um, overlay, what is the reasoning? for suggesting that we would remove it. it, it uh, on Zach, it was a give and take. We had a lot of members of Zach that were um, <coughs> no more development, no more expansion in town. Let's hold stuff down. So in order to gain a little on South Street, it was, OK, what are we going to take away? And so that's the way Zach was. And it was, OK, uh, well, how about way down here? OK, so it was almost. It was compromise, basically. Compromise, compromise. Yeah. because because I, uh, to me, I mean, given what John said at the beginning of this yeah. discussion about being close to restaurants and shopping and more that type of environment, this seems to me to be um, yeah. exactly what we'd be looking for right. for a hotel district. So I was just curious what right. the reasoning it was, it was. It was the only way that it, that we could. We're, I'm sorry to the chair. Yeah. That we could get get any of this expansion that 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 the chamber thought were, were areas that that could uh, attract a uh, hotel one thing to note is it's <coughs> only allowed one hotel on the east side of 495 and one on the west side mm -hmm. so once you put one in wherever it goes on that side there's no ability to put a second hotel in I'm sorry if I missed this point, but can you explain to me the additional little area up that Mr. Cavanaugh was just talking to? That seems kind of a funny little add-on, and I'm not sure like I understand it. Jumper or something? I think it must be. Uh, Zach was measuring 400 feet from residential districts, and that's where the line fell. So that little, that little shape up there is tucked in up there in keeping with 400 feet away from a, a surrounding residence? It's on South that's Street, correct. so it's across the street from the current district. It's a portion of um, 
42 and 52 South Streets. All right, that, that, that piece doesn't necessarily make sense. Can you explain that to me? I mean, I, I understand well, keeping away from the residences, but. Yeah, I mean, essentially that's what the uh, mm -hmm. criteria was to try and have a setback. <coughs> um, you know, again, zoning lines and so on don't respond to you know, a lot of times property lines, right. nor any existing buildings that are there. Right. So that was really the criteria that was set up and that's essentially where it lands. Is that is that piece somehow? Because I, I know the the little bit that I was at your meet, your hearings, um, there was you know discussion about the the property that really is tucked next to 495. It may or may never be um, the most attractive mm -hmm. piece for. Was there some? Was that piece considered particularly attractive for a potential hotel, or it just sort of met the criteria as you were going up that street? I think it's the latter. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair. Just since we got some negative feedback on that that area that Muriel was just talking about, and it, it seems to be a, a loner and just thrown in there, um, I would make a suggestion that we don't include that. Uh, can I just add, it's contiguous with the existing hotel district, I believe. It is? It's across the street. It, yeah. Oh, it's okay. across, it's across the street. So that's how exactly. what's being shown on and this map. Okay. And, and right, and we had a... See, th I, I think that that is part of the problem, <clears throat> too, is that so it doesn't right. show. Yeah. The, here and then here. So, so there... Maybe, maybe with different color lines in that map, you can show the existing hotel. Yeah, so this is, this is Parkwood. Yeah. Right? And these are... And then here, this is... If you went down the line, it would be right here. So they're in the same district. Yeah, but they're across the 495. Correct. Yeah, it is yeah. across. Uh, okay. If we look on our page 35, <coughs> you can actually yeah. get a blow up. <coughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I got it right here. Thank you. This one is the one he was looking at right here. So it's just expanding it a little, but not correct. A little bit across the street is basically the, um, is the other piece of the district across. Right, here. that's the part. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where are the Any other uh, public discussion? Any discussion on the board on the issues that are brought up by the public, in addition to what we've touched on already? I would be interested in retaining a part of Lumber Street within the hotel overlay district. Um, if that's. Uh, I think we're all in agreement with yeah. that. Yeah. We can add that as an amendment. Really yeah. yeah. Well, and what about this section we were discussing now? I, I, well, yeah, I, brought, I brought it up, I just wanted to say, but I'm good with it now that I know it's part of the existing it's hotel lake. Yeah. Well, right. it, is, it is the only, at this point, it was the, it was the only on that side. And what we did was we just expanded it up South Street right now. So it, it looks like a little, tea. maybe this is another reason why we haven't been able to attract somebody because we just said we can have this. But this is not this part of that. Yeah. No, this is not. But I'm, idea, I'm but ideally, you could get two hotels. Essentially, you could get no, no. That's what he was just. We, we, one could be here, one could be here. Yeah. But so, through you, Mr. Chair, well, it's one they, or the other. I think is that what you're saying? Will they, they be able to come back with a better map next time? Or before town meeting? Or before town meeting? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, that would be the request <laughs> from <laughs> us. I think it's kind of hard to understand exactly what is and is not. I mean, it's, it's, we have the additions, but not. But I think. I just want to through the chair. I just yeah. want to say I think it makes sense to keep everything around the Cloverleaf 495, and I think that uh, and I, I think it's great that you guys have gone through the the process of meeting and and thinking this all through. Um, so yeah, I like the ideas. Again, it was a, it was a compromise, and, right. and, and right. that's why it, I'm glad that we have another nine that can go through <laughs> from <laughs> from the previous 18. Or Again, you're welcome. <laughs> do we want to vote on this now? Do we want to? Um, are we taking into consideration the gentleman that came up? Well, that's what I'm asking mm -hmm. on. Oh, yeah. We already took into consideration <clears throat> adding the parcel back. Right. Do we want to remove this parcel? 
Well, I don't think he was asking us to remove the entire parcel. No, no. If you know, I think he was asking us to, to move just the line one, one way or one way, the other way. <coughs> way. Uh, I, he was just asking us to amend it. No, no. Asking to have it removed because it's completely inaccurate as it is. I don't want it. I already have an office building in my backyard. There's plenty of other land where a hotel can be built. Why don't we try just between South Street 495 to the eastern side of South Street to see if we can get a hotel built there first? Why would why would we why would the town allow the first hotel to get built to be built in my backyard? I misunderstood what you said. I thought you were asking us to look at it as uh, to kind of readjust it. I didn't realize you wanted well, it really gone. I would rather yeah. get gone. Okay. But if you put a hotel there yeah. and then people park in the existing parking lot, yeah. not within the bond. All right, thank you. I'm sorry. So I misunderstood you initially. Sorry. Yeah. If, if I may, if I may. <clears throat> Can I have a definition, Elaine, of hotel district just for, for the public <laughs> and, overlay. and stuff? Be, overlay. Overlay. So, overlay. So within the hotel overlay district, the planning board can <coughs> grant a special permit to allow a hotel, and there can be one on the east side of 495 and one on the west side of 495 maximum. But is there any other um, b building or facility that falls under the criteria of a hotel that can be utilized in that area within the scope of the boundaries that are already existing? It's zoned industrial right now. It's zoned industrial A. So without, if the hotel overlay was not there, it could have every use that was allowed in the industrial A district as the zoning bylaw lists it. With the hotel overlay, it means in addition to the uses that are already allowed, somebody may be able to build a hotel. Okay, so what, what to, to your point that I, I, I want to feel that you, yeah. you, you are heard, yeah. is that <coughs> even, if, even if we don't include that piece into hotel, someone can come in and still build something that is going to be in your backyard. There's, an empty, there's, there's been an empty office there. building in my backyard for 15 years. I understand that. But I understand. The thing is, if, if, by this, if you just put a hotel there, but you don't do anything about the existing building and the existing parking lot, the hotel has spilled outside of that property. <laughs> right. So, so that is not an accurate representation. I, I don't want a hotel in my backyard to begin with, <laughs> but if there is going to be a hotel there, it needs to be constrained to within that border area. And it won't be because there's a building that's one third out of it, and there's a parking lot. Isn't there actually two buildings that are in within that that uh, scope? Yeah. yeah. The other one is pretty far away from me. Though. The one, the one that is most concerning is 52 South Street. That's pretty much I, I see it. Okay. So, John, we got well, to the chair again. If that is approved, the hotel could only be built right. within that district. I'm trying to stop people from parking in the parking lot right next to the building. So again, that's all part of the site plan review process. So you'd have to tear up the, you'd have to tear down one third of 52 South Street to tear up the parking lot. It's possible. I recommend that I get removed. Yeah. I, I mean, I we're getting pushed back on this block as well, so mm -hmm. I don't think it's to be honest worth the fight where we have plenty of other spaces where, where we that's could put a hotel on the that's left. That's my thinking. Too. So I why? So a little piece. I, I yeah, get so the whole argument that it's, but it's a little piece thing yeah, going so out it there. It sounds like we could vote for this with a couple of amendments. Yeah. If I'm, if I'm hearing this properly. And then it still stays as a, as, as itself. We haven't changed anyway. its potential right. uses so, except right. for the hotel. Yeah. So, 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 so that's my point. Is that <coughs> even though, even though it, it, we redefine it as hotel district, that's, that's if we what did. Even if on the reversion of it, pulling it back, it's still going to be industrial. So <coughs> it's already industrial. It already is. No, is it? Yeah. No. 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 I, I don't think we need to go there, people. If we're thinking about not changing it, mm -hmm. we don't need to go to that discussion. Right. Right. Well, I mean, for the chair, it's industrial A already, where that yellow mark is where you're concerned, but. Um, they're going by distance from homes that makes that area being demarked that way showing demarcated that way showing that it's possible if we allow it if it's contiguous with other areas that are already hotel overlay district that this would just give more choices to to the owners of that property right now who have an empty building or half empty building whatever uh, and it gives more opportunity if it does happen on the west side or the east side to happen now um, the easy answer is to say well, well no we don't want a hotel there but the larger question is do we want hotels and I think the answer is yes and let the developers come up with the best plan and we, we're not gonna let anything 
terrible happened. Um, but then again, uh, it's it's not our, our property. It's our <coughs> town. We want our town to have two hotels. Can hopefully, you, can so. the property owner point out his house on the map? All right, so you are. Right? Right? No, no, no. Cut no. through the chair. And so he's kind of in this area project, here. Yeah. We would say we, we know the neighborhood or, or have light issues, and we can get the developer to put trees and barriers. So in the interest in the interest of time, so if there's a developer and there's a change, we can we can help. So there's there's a couple of ways of looking at it. I want to get us kind of focused on and we could <clears throat> move to and make the decision to recommend removing this parcel. Uh, I would recommend this, this removing the parcel, parcel. myself personally. And yes, I, 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 one I, of the other things just to be careful of whatever is built and Elaine correct me if I'm wrong <clears throat> you could build a building the same size the same shape windows etc that's not a hotel and we understand. Still do that. I understand. Okay. So I'd like to move to make a motion to, um, with the two amendments, one um, being to not remove the yeah, land on Lumber Street, yeah. and but also as far as adding to remove that block of land. And I would second that. You have a second? Mm -hmm. Discussion? So I guess, could you just repeat? Uh, what sure. Can you do add the, the, little, the little segment on South Street, or on uh, Lumber? So, re so they want to remove that. Right, add that back. Add back in 32, 34. So basically, yeah. yeah. Right. Yes, add that back in. Or keep it in, keep it in. Right, and then remove. And then well, we're not, not removing it. Well, we're not removing it. Right. We're just not adding <laughs> that in. The terminology is <laughs> different, right. but yes, I think you know what it is. Yeah. So basically, accept the recommendation of Zach with two changes. Oh, nice. uh, not uh, three. taking into to yeah. that add up there uh, at 52 and uh, not taking the recommendation to remove the Lover Street. Correct. Okay, that's what's in front of the board. Any further discussion? Any discussion from the public? Any other thoughts from Zach? No, that's it. That's it. You know, this is what it's all about. It's about the, you know having the input because you know it was just a, a group of us you know, trying to think of mm -hmm. all of these scenarios. Mm -hmm. And, and this, this is really basically helps. a practice run for town meeting, okay. right? Yeah. I mean, right, and that's exactly yeah. what, and that's what we try and do. And, and, and having <coughs> a public hearing really is a, a, a committee town hearing. Okay, a town meeting. let's take a vote. I make a motion. We already have a, already a yeah. motion. <laughs> <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> opposed, abstain? Opposed. So opposed. One opposed, <laughs> so carried. Oh, you rebel. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Without a cause. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mr. Catino, we want to discuss um, probably the next three kind of joined together okay. because they are. <coughs> yeah. Well, uh, b basically, again, we were just trying to homogenize and. Um, uh, because of, in some parts of South Street, it, that, it, it, one, one can go up to uh, 60 feet. In other places, it's 45 feet. And then down on uh, in, in the Parkwood area, it was 45 feet. We wanted to try and, again, just level the playing field for whatever hotel wanted to come in. And we were, we were trying, at, at, at the time, we, there was a belt <coughs> and suspenders where we were giving the people a height and also telling them how many stories they could put within that height realizing that that's really not the way that uh, builders like to work. Just give them a height because then they just they can't go over that height. If you want to put two stories and have, you know, 30 foot ceilings, okay. Yeah. But, uh, so, so we're just trying to homogenize it and, and just do uh, what, what are we currently saying right now to, that we to have, builders? That we have, um, number four. Number no, no. Four. Oh, number four. So, what are we telling builders currently? The footage, the height. No, no. We do four. we do feet in and uh, and four stories. Four, four and stories, stories right? So oh, oh, I see. And, I, know, I see. I'm sorry. I'm mis I'm misreading this. And try and I'm having trouble in, tonight. You know, four or five stories in that same sixty feet. Well, then they're just gonna. Have so we're we're gonna go away from the um the number of stories and right. just go with footage. We're gonna go with height. Okay, right. Three, Mr. Chair. Yes. Just there's a note. Our 
attorney. I, I think there's two letters, so I think the February 23rd supersedes the February 21st, but I just wanted to make sure that that's just minor verbiage. I, I, I didn't get a copy, so I'm not on the planning board anymore. And we don't have one on the industrial aid I just see two for the building height by law, right? The 21st and the 23rd. One's. Um, oh, industrial B. Okay, they're more specific. Is, Sorry. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. They're different. My Some, apologies. It's minor wordsmithing. Okay, yeah. yeah. Regardless, it's minor wordsmithing, correct? <clears throat> That's all I, my basic question was. Thank you, Elaine. So, as we, as we move forward, then. So why don't we, so we address industrial A, why don't we address industrial B and just. Well, that, uh, that well, actually, same. I just really went over the, it. Was, it really, it, you know, when it comes to, yeah, when it comes to all, we move the stories and all three of them. Yeah. Okay. And just to clarify, in some areas, the height limit is 40 feet and some it's 60, and that would remain the same. Just We're just taking the, the um, wording out, basically. Out. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Any further discussion from the board? Sorry, one more quick question. So it's broken out to three parts? Well, we're going to do these two, and then we'll do the hotel overlay. No, no, no. It's, there's an A, there's an industrial A, A district, industrial B district, and industrial B. Maximum height. Maximum height. Right. It's like, what's that one portion? That one portion is 60 feet, the other one is 45. No, my question is why is it broken up separately than just having one generic one for industrial B? Because I believe, in Mr. Chairman, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, for the second one, uh, one portion, that's for within the hotel overlay district that have allowed um, increase from 45 to 60. Okay. But well, we're not going to vote on that now. We're going to vote just on first two. Nail. Which is okay. Okay. Uh, be, any okay. discussion from the public? No. Can I entertain a motion. Make a motion to uh, adopt. Um, to recommend. To recommend the, the height as stated from the zoning advisory committee. Second. Oh, number six and seven, right? Six, yeah. seven. six yeah. and seven. Any further discussion? <coughs> no. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstains? So carried. Mr. Catino? Okay, and in, 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 uh, B, uh, uh, and industrial B district. Well, I think we voted we, on We've already done B. that. We're okay. doing that. Okay, and then, uh, oh, so now we're just jumping. We're on number eight. So now we're jumping, but mine is not number eight. Parkwood Drive. I, 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 mine is not number eight. Yeah. So the accessory family dwelling units? No, uh, Parkwood uh, Drive. Parkwood Drive. Drive. Oh, oh, maximum, maximum, maximum building, maximum building height. height. 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60 stories. From 45 to 60. One portion of industrial B. Right. What I was just asking about, so just right. while John's looking at that, just right. to further ask the question, mm -hmm. I guess it sounds kind of hokey to me. Is this something oh, we can just put the wording in the hotel overlay district instead of one portion of residential B? I, mean, I, I don't know the logistics behind it. The way the bylaws are set up right now, it's okay. easier to do it in this okay. particular yeah. Just asking the question. Thank you. You would know better than I would. So what you want to discuss? I, I well. can speak to this one. I mean, you know, kind of in a nutshell, the thought here is to not necessarily spread the footprint, but actually go up with that. Um, so <coughs> not necessarily going wider, to going higher for to the extent for another 15 feet um, overall. Now, just one of the discussions, uh, as I, I stated with Mr. Kendall, he, he was talking about if you assume that the market now is 80 rooms, give or take, you're going to be constrained by there are certain efficiencies in number of rooms per floor uh, for housekeeping purposes. And therefore, you're not necessarily, no one is going to build, you know, a six story or a 60 foot hotel with 10 rooms per floor because it's inefficient uh, to do. So this would come into play if a larger hotel at some future date was developed. Uh, that chances are somebody wouldn't go higher rather than out because it's more efficient to, go to have to go out than to go up. Although we heard from somebody in the business at the Zach that because of the location, they need to get up a little bit above, they're down sort of tucked under and next to the highway. Um, and there's some thought that getting up above the highway would 
be more attractive, if, unless I'm misspeaking myself. I don't, I don't know if that was um, included into that concept. What is it, John? But actually, just both are true. And yeah, some instances. Yeah. It did come out. I remember. Yeah, I, don't know I how do. Th I do think, though, from out. a practical perspective, just thinking about this in terms of uh, zoning, we have broadened the area, and now we are talking about um, increasing the height. So the potential is for a very big, tall um, structure. If somebody brought a big piece of property, which is not necessarily unattractive, I'm just saying we could be talking about both things in the in this case. I just wanted to clarify that the maximum height that uh, would be changed would apply to any use in that area, not just yes. the right. So. Yes. But exactly. the footprint could expand as well, though, right? <coughs> as right. it can now. now. It can now, as it can now. But I think what it's saying <coughs> is it's essentially taking out one more floor, right, from 45 to 60. It's 15 feet. We're, we're right, that's basically, right. we're talking about break, you know, if, if if 45 feet didn't work, let's try giving them 15 more feet for basically one more floor. Right. Mm -hmm. and but without limit to staying within the the setbacks, without limiting yeah, we're to sorry. we're not touching right. any of the setbacks. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay. Let's see. Any discussion from the public? All quiet. To the chair. Uh, does the fire chief have any? Uh, Concerns with 60 feet. We're good with equipment. I think we are. On the last go around. Yeah, I think we're okay with the 60 feet. I, I mentioned in town meeting last year, um, we have a ladder truck now. Mm -hmm. It's uh, 1999. Just keep in mind, I did put an ask to the future. We want to keep one that's fresh, especially as we grow and develop. So just keep that in mind. And okay. thanks. Thank you. Thank you for getting that. I think it's a, a pretty straightforward request, and it's lower than the previous attempts at 70 and, and more. Okay. Uh, and I want to make a motion. I'll, I'll, I'll make the motion with uh, this one point of clarification that we're being clear that it's, it's a hotel overlay district that we're referring to. Uh, is that something that's just a housekeeping thing, or? It's within, the, so it's the hotel overlay district in the Parkwood Drive area, either as it is now or as our, as town meeting would amend it. Um, but it's every use that's allowed right, within right. that area. So, so, it's, so it's not just a hotel. It's not just yeah, a hotel. Right. Right. It, could, it could be a business. So it's a, right. it's a subset yeah. of that industrial right. district. Correct. <coughs> okay. But it does include the whole overlay district. Yes. 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 All of right. it. Right. Which, which precludes Thanks. everything else. It just is only making it the only one place. No, no. no if, if, if a business wanted to come in and build a 60-foot building, right. they could. Right. Correct. I'm just thinking it might be easier for people to understand it at town meeting if it's the hotel overlay district that we're appending. Industrial. Industrial. Hotel yeah. overlay district. Industrial. Well, I think that's already the, industrial. Right. Yeah. But let, well, that's, well, let's worry about how we discuss it at yeah, town meeting wording. when we do the okay. wording. Yeah. Let's yeah. get right. this. So yeah. motion. Yeah. Before, before, you, uh, before you bring up the motion, I do have some more discussion uh, that's specific. Is it okay? Yep. Um, so just a, a question. We have an industrial A and industrial B, left side, right side of the highway. Why isn't there just one height mm. for buildings for all of them? Why are we complicating this? It, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it has to do with um, one side of South Higher. Street hangs over the lake. So there's a, a there was an attempt mm -hmm. to <coughs> minimize the height on that side, I think. Correct. That's previous. And a, and a densely residential. Right. So that's special <coughs> A, right? But are we increasing that to 60 feet with this? No. No. It's no. Only it's only down below. No, no. Just no, but I thought the previous. I thought the previous. One. Yeah, we that's didn't the, change the previous one. We didn't change the it height at all. It already is 60 feet on the other side. It, well, that's what I'm saying. It's already 60 feet. Sorry. It already is 60. Now, no, this is down a parkway. So right. So why wouldn't we all have 60 feet in all zones? Because that, because it's, it's 45. Right it's 45 feet. Where? In in A and B. It's at 45. All we did was remove the floor wording. Hmm? No, no, in parts of A. Oh, parts of A. Parts of A. It's, it's just the hotel. On the other side of the street, okay. it's 60 Just the feet. hotel overlay piece of the A? No, no, no. no. Yeah, that was the way it was written for, for the industrial area. I, I don't know why we, we go down like this. Feet well, we're on not. Side. I think. Zoning. Yeah, I think the. We're not here necessarily yeah. to change all the zoning, exactly. which is what we're opening up. So let's limit it to. 
the discussion on <laughs> on this item. Um, so, any further discussion on? <laughs> I want to bring. I, I, I'd like some clarity on, to, to David's question, just so that we're we're clear that David has got his answer. So. Well, I think that opens up. We either table the whole thing and look at the zoning A and B completely. I would like to do that. But because I mean, this is the same question the town meeting is going to okay. have. It's like, why are you doing it like this? Right. Well, why don't we do? So let's take it up in a vote. If some does somebody want to move what's in front I, of us? I move that we have in front that we support what we have in front of us, with the caveat that we figure out a better way of wording it. Yep. But or better visual. What time? Yeah, better visual. Yeah. Let's do a second. Yeah. Second. second. Okay. Let's do a discussion. Discussion. I would prefer not to do that because you're going to approve something, then try to change it later, <coughs> versus I, doing it right the first time. I, I'm with David. I'd like to have some clarity on what it is we're doing and why we're doing it before we vote it. I mean, if we can make this I mean, simple. I mean, I'm not saying get rid of it. That's I mean, what I'm, I'm, I'm for it. the article, but I'm just looking for consistency and why we're making so many exceptions. I think it's easy to to misunderstand the intention of this. Because of the wording we're using, including industrial zone language, when it's not all the industrial zones, any industrial zones, it's part of an industrial zone that includes the hotel overlay district in this area for Parkwood. It's not just, uh, well, okay. it's just about, I'll there's nothing make else. Here. It's that only, I know you're, you're here, you have a motion on the table, so I'll, I'll be brief. It's only that one small section of Parkwood. We really don't want to go to 60 feet on the other side uh, on the other side of South Street because that overlooks the lake and that, that would upset many, many people. You know, this is only for that one spot to go up 15 feet to try and get one more floor. But the, the comment I would make is that in the, in the verbiage, you said that the left side is already not changing. No, it's no, at 60 feet. Is no, no, you, we're not talking about South Street right now. We're I know, I'm just South saying that when you're saying it, it's just for Elmwood. You also mentioned that 60 feet on the other side for the industrial A, so. That's going to bring up some that's confusion. That exists right now. I know, but that's going to bring up some confusion. Can, can I just ask a quick question, just for clear? So, do you want to revisit whether or not we change the heights in all of these districts? Because we're already at 60 and 45. We're not changing the heights. Except in this. Except in this one, one, one area. Yeah, one area. One area. So, why isn't consistently? I'm no, looking no. for consistency across industrial A and industrial B. So, no, 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 so no, we can't it's, because it's consistent to one area. Street. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, if we don't have time, to, if we have time to discuss it now, let's discuss it. Okay, but, no, let's let's if you want if if we want to open up that discussion, <coughs> or we can table it and 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 basically move it to the the next meeting. But I think what the discussion would be is at a future date address all the zoning here and the heights here. Because I don't think at this point we could address it for this town meeting uh, and work it that way. You'd have to have another hearing since we only advertise it for this particular location. Right. Correct. I, I think it's right. going to be a scope critical okay. thing. Right? So I don't. Yeah, so, I don't so want to. I don't want to put a fly in the way. Okay. If, if so we, no. I'm okay with doing what we have here. If we have an agenda item, maybe to clean it up later okay. on. I mean, if that works, the path of least resistance. Okay. I don't want to be a, a road blocker. You know, I'm just okay. saying, as a planning board, we should look at at some point of okay. making it more simple. We can't. If we can't, okay. maybe we can't. Well, every Zoning two or three years, that looks like this every two or three years. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. only have. This is a. This is like lighting and so tough I, items coming up. So is let's. I'm good with this uh -huh. Okay. As the All right. So any further discussion from the board? No. And we have a motion. Do we have a motion? We do. Yes. Yeah. In so second. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna yeah. To abstain. I'm not like overwrought, but. So carry. It's a little confusing. Okay. It is confusing. There is that kiss on the kiss. Mr. Okay. Catino. Okay, so this is the accessory family dwelling unit. This is where um, where we can uh, redo a single family home so that it doesn't uh, upset the character of a neighborhood, so that uh, <coughs> people can put an addition on to uh, to allow a um, somebody else to move in and have their own private uh, apartment. Like a like a B and B. No, like no, a like, a, like a, your your mother-in-law mother wants to move in. Yeah, in -laws. Kind of, yeah, in law type mm -hmm. stuff. Just for clarity. If I could see the chair, I thought I read that um, 
they get a lot of these requests for these very small units and they typically just approve them so mm -hmm. they wanted to be able to allow them by right and then the larger ones they want to be able to more discretion to right to, to get them in. that's essentially what it is to right. take yeah. it up from 800 to 1000 if they give them that anything above that it still goes through zba right and i don't think that they ever say say no to somebody who has a an adult child with special needs or an elderly parent that no. needs their own mark says they have it's mm -hmm. been past yeah. recent memory today. and thank goodness <laughs> and this is strictly for that purpose, not rental of any sort, correct? Correct. No. Correct. Okay. Yes. Any discussion from the public? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chuck Joseph, 5 Benson Road. Um, I'd, I'd really like the board to really study this. Uh, this is a very significant issue in the housing market today. It is going to become more significant as we move on. We have more people who are trying to take care of elderly parents and trying to provide for them in a way that's economically feasible. My concern here is, is there's a, I have a few. First of all, I'd like to commend <coughs> Zach. I think they're trying to streamline this process. I think that's a great idea. But I'm really struggling with this difference between a mini accessory use and a standard. All right, and it strikes me. Here's, here's my concern. I have clients that are modest homes, 2,400 square feet. If I understand this correctly, they cannot build a 1,000 square foot standard accessory dwelling unit because it's restricted to one third of the size of the house. But if I have someone maybe of more means who has a 3,400 square foot house, they can build a 1,000 square foot. That does not ring true to me. But I just want to say right now, without it, they're limited to a maximum of 800. 800. Everybody, so everybody is. is yeah. Everybody is. What I'm saying is it seems to me that we're making some type of a discrimination here that is not overtly uh, based on income, but when you're basing it on size of home, it, I don't see, I do not see the reason for this. I do not understand it. To the chair, you, you mean this change in the specific item uh, we're talking about does that, because it's changing to the size of home? Correct. We're, we're, we're tying a 1,000, we're tying the size of your accessory dwelling unit to the size of your existing home. And we're saying if you don't have a 3,000 square foot home, you can't build a 1,000 square foot accessory dwelling unit. You can always do the 800 by right. That's correct. And as someone who has worked diligently with many people to design an apartment in 800 square feet, there is a big difference between 800 and 1,000 when you're trying to take care of two parents, not necessarily a widowed parent or a special needs child. And our bylaw, as you propose it, allows for up to three people to live in two bedrooms in that size unit. So how realistic is this? All right, and I'm, I'm telling you this, and I'm, I'm a little bit passionate about it because in my experience in this housing market, oftentimes it's people of modest means that have the most need to take right. care of their parents. Right. Mm -hmm. And it seems like we're restricting them in a way that is just unfair. So can I ask a clarifying question, Chuck? Mm -hmm. um, if you did not have it tied to the size of the house, mm -hmm. but it could be considered uh, under uh, uh, by a special permit through the ZBA come out? I think what would happen, Muriel, is that the the owner of the modest home would have to go through the standard procedure for a standard, you know, they'd have to go for a special permit. Yeah. The 800, as I understand it, does not require a right. permit. That would be by right now. Right. But if I'm in a 2,400, and, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, John, but if I'm in a 2,400 square foot house and I want to build my parents a 1,000 square foot apartment, I can't do it. Right. Unless I add 600 square feet to my home in order to be able to then get the 3,000 square feet for a 1,000 square foot unit. Yeah. Or, go, go ahead. Wouldn't but, this still be allowed with a special permit? I, it, exactly. Yeah. Right. You, wouldn't you be able to go back to, to ZBA, make the appeal or application for to address that situation? I think it says limited. here you cannot exceed one-third the size of the yeah. home. I remember reading that too. Okay. Right. Uh, if but, I, go ahead. Yeah, if I may. Again, this was th this, this, this was a conversation. And what happened was um, several of the members um, uh, of ZAC were saying that there are par parts of town that have very small homes and that if this accessory dwelling ended up looking too big, it may change the, the look of the neighborhood. But John, wouldn't they also always have to 
meet setback requirements, uh, et cetera? Absolutely. Uh, well, I, I did argue that those points. But so I could I, put an addition was, onto my house of 1,000 square feet, but it could not be an accessory dwelling unit. That is correct. It makes no sense. To the chair, <coughs> would you recommend, um, since this and the other um, item are very similar, uh, have you seen the comments from the legal counsel? I have not. All right, I'll ask you my next question then. Would you recommend maybe then just simplifying our current bylaw to go from 800 to 1,000? And then I, don't worry I, about I, I would because to me it seems like, first of all, practically speaking, architecturally, 1,000 square feet, you can do a good accessory unit. 800, it is really tough. Putting two bedrooms in 800, kitchen and a living room and a bathroom, probably not going to happen. All right, so if you do that, I don't see <coughs> if they have to abide by all zoning bylaws on in place in their zone. If they're on a small lot, they have, if you're in you know, residential A, you have to abide by residential, residential A setbacks. So I don't, I don't see the issue. Okay, thank you and let's, any other comments from the public? So why don't we discuss it? What's the feeling on the board on on that item. I'll start it off if you want. I, I feel that um, Chuck has a, a very valid point, is that the 800 is restrictive to um, the ability of, of what the size of the house is. Why would we do that if, if this the parameters are that, that we go through the zoning and, and make additions for setbacks and stuff like that? Why couldn't we, we extend it to 1,000? I'm inclined to recommend it as written um, because this is, it sounds, it sounds like the ZBA routinely approves ones that are R800 square feet. I mean, I'm okay with tabling it until we get more information from them. But. Can I just make sure I, I understand correctly? Are we adding in the percentage of the, the square foot footage of the home? Did that get uh, well, added? Th again, that was the compromise. When, when we were going from 800 to 1,000, so we that, are that's what some people, right. that, that okay. some people on Zach actually was, one person was very adamant, saying that it really should be only one third, one third this, this size. And in order to go from 800 to 1,000, we had to include the one third. But Chuck make, does make a very valid very point valid. that, mm -hmm. you know, um, a stepping back from it, you know, it could be um, Difficult. A, an economic uh, detriment to some people. Right. Well, and not only that, limit the flexibility of yeah. people who need the flexibility the most. Exactly. So, uh, I'm sorry, okay. through Mr. Chairman, but don't you still have the ability through ZBA to no. make that appeal? That would, be, <clears throat> I think that that is not, a, I think this, you could get a, a special permit, but within the constraints of it not exceeding, um, that would be a variance if I'm mm -hmm. not because mistaken. Of the and that's an additional level. A, a, an additional challenge, an additional this. step, okay. and money, mm -hmm. and because of that, no and, be, and because of the because of the wording in that, that we were we are prohibiting that and making it more difficult in the first place. I do think that it is at both explicit and implicit right. that as a board we have decided that that percentage of the square footage is important the town if we voted this if way. we voted one, this one theoretical and I'd like to move if somebody would make a motion or we make a motion a suggestion to table it for more information but I'll just throw out a theoretical if it's a 2400 square foot house on five acres <laughs> are we going to force them to do a, <laughs> a special permit to add a thousand square feet a variance at that point. A variance at that point. Yeah. Is it? It. I'm just throwing out that theoretical. I would. Word. I would actually really like to talk about that a little bit more because I. I am compelled by Mr. Joseph's uh, information and argument. Yeah. So if we want more discussion, I would, I, I would second what Muriel okay, just said. Okay. So why don't we? Can we make we a motion to table this? Continue. Okay. We continue. Yeah. Okay. Do we need okay. a motion, or we can just wait till the end of the evening? That's okay. Okay. Um, do we have to cover everything tonight? <laughs> well, there's, only, there's, only one, there's only one more that I'm here for. Yeah, but I think the items oh, that okay. we have left are going to be. Yeah, there's some people here for one particular item. Okay. Yeah. Um, <coughs> okay. Yeah, and so the. Uh, 
Recreational marijuana, right. that no existing mm -hmm. language pertaining to recreational marijuana use with the exception of temporary moratorium adopted at, two seven, at the um, uh, town meeting last year. And, um, and so basically this is, this is, we voted it at the ballot box to, to restrict it and now this is just the, um, uh, the town meeting part of it to restrict marijuana use. Yeah. Was there a strategy for doing it in two pieces sort of that way? There, it always has to be in two pieces. I know it always has to be in two pieces, but usually we go to town meeting and then the ballot. Well, I think in town council's letter they explained oh. that the law changed over the summer. Thank you. So, so they're still trying to monetize the value of, of marijuana and recreational, and I think that is the holdup on all of this, isn't it? From a state level. Well, it might be, but that that's yeah. not really yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. I know. But any discussion <coughs> from the board on this, or can we open up to the public? I'd like to hear from the public on okay. this one, I think. Thank you. Come on up, introduce yourself and your address, please. Good evening, everybody. I'm Denise Hildreth, 19 Leonard Street. I'm the Director of Youth and Family Services for the town. Um, I'd like to encourage the board to move this forward to town meeting for a vote by the citizens. There's a lot of very important considerations as we decide whether or not we're going to have marijuana establishments in town. I'd like for the town folks to be able to consider all of those options and vote. Um, so I would strongly like to urge you to go forward with town meeting for this article. I think we've already made the motion to move it. It's just whether we recommend it or not at this point. Or you could remove it. From the oh, we could remove well. it. Any discussion on the comment paint? Do you have a do you have a feeling of, about uh, the value of your relative position on sure. that? Um, my position as a person who works day to day with youth and families in town is that an opt out would be our best strategy. Um, I have no compelling evidence that points in the direction of this being um, something that enriches or improves or um, helps with community development or the lives of kids and families. Um, certainly my work with kids and families in town um, proves to me that marijuana use is a problem, especially for youth. Obviously, if we were to have marijuana establishments in town, those would be for folks 21 and over, but the normalization of marijuana use that comes with having marijuana establishments in town creates a problem for youth. So I would be looking for an opt-out, and um, very strongly so, especially knowing the youth that I work with in town. To that point, may I? Would that... To, to follow up with the question of that, would that, do you feel the same way about medical <coughs> usage of, of marijuana being um, researched and for people that have seizures and, and that have debilitating, life-threatening stuff, would you, would you f still feel the same way on, on their aspect? So I'm not debating the use of medical marijuana or recreational marijuana by people who either need it medically or over 21. That's already been decided, and that's the law of the Commonwealth. And folks will have opportunities to be able to buy marijuana recreationally and to get it medically um, in other places, certainly. And we're likely to have delivery to people's <coughs> homes. So I think what we're really going to be talking about, if the opt-out is something that we're focusing on, is whether or not we have it here in Hopkinton. Mm -hmm. That's really the only, the only decision that this brings forth. And what this doesn't do, it doesn't impact medical marijuana right. at all. This is recreational. It's strictly rec recreational. Through the chair. Uh, Ms. Hilder, thank mm -hmm. you for what you do in the town. I know you've done a really uh, great job. Uh, you've made, a, I think, an impact in a positive way. Absolutely. Um, uh, but I do hate to disagree with you. Um, my mother had cancer, and uh, marijuana could have helped her. She was born in the 1930s and grew up in the 50s, and it was a very negative connotation to have anything to do with marijuana. This is the 1990s. Um, I'm not for people walking around and getting high and all that. I'm just saying that tobacco, alcohol, far worse problems. And we're not going to turn that around uh, unless we you know, work together as a town, as a community. Uh, but I think excluding marijuana and vilifying it um, doesn't help, um, but uh, I do appreciate mm -hmm. everything you do. I don't mean to count, count. No, nope. and it's not my intention I, to yeah. in any way vilify, but certainly, point, and I'm not trying to. But, but it does. If I could just, so. Kelly? I was just going to say, I, I think 
and I appreciate your viewpoint view strongly, but I think you're confusing the two mm -hmm. issues right. between recreational and medical mm -hmm. marijuana usage. I, I think, you know. Um, well, my point is it, anything that kind of <coughs> vilifies it doesn't help the people that are on the border if, with, if they do need it medically. Uh, recreationally, it's not a danger like alcohol is. It's not a danger like tobacco is. Tobacco and alcohol kill people every day. Okay, let's, where, where we have three seconds. No, we've got some, <coughs> so I'd like just to move, get more input from other members of the board. That's fine. Um, oh, again, not to, I appreciate everything that you're doing down. <coughs> um, one of the points that you mentioned is the normalization of marijuana. <coughs> Excuse me. I think the cat's out of the bag. <coughs> Excuse me. It's already been normalized. It's mm -hmm. been legalized, and then the question is, on a state level, what, on a state level. But what difference is it going to make whether it's in Hopkinton or Milford or Westboro or Upton or Ashland? They can still get it, mm -hmm. um, and I think the difference there would be, you know, from a from a town perspective, yeah, what's the difference? <laughs> they so can get I'd it. I'd be happy to, talk to speak to that. Um, certainly, yes, they can get it, but. Um, the difference of getting it here and seeing it advertised here and having it all over the place here does impact the way that kids view the consumption of all types of products. And we know that about, you know, the more alcohol advertisements kids see, the more likely they are to use. The more normalized it is, the more likely we are to have an issue. And we do know that marijuana use for kids is a problem. We do know that that's harmful to them. Again, not speaking to people over 21, that's been decided. The Commonwealth has made that decision. That's the law of the land. Um, but my perspective is really all about kids and families, and there's no evidence that I've seen that says that having marijuana establishments in a town enriches the community, and that's really where my, my focus lies. Okay. Let, I, I, let's keep the discussion because we're already past the time, but we have to address it. Chief? Thanks. I appreciate the opportunity. Um, just on a, a preparedness was we talked about in a town meeting last year. Uh, I'm, I'm still looking to the issue to understand our preparedness with um, the new marijuana uh, law. Um, just some of the areas is when I look at the state right now and I'm watching them try to decide whether they're prepared or not. So when we say it's like already done, um, I'm not sure that the state is totally prepared for whatever is gonna come at us. And uh, I think that's a journey as a group in our community we have to do together. So to say that it's all done, I just feel like that's a little premature. And I'd like to challenge us that we keep looking here and then maybe we make sure we build in enough time as we make each one of these decisions going forward, whether it's for sale in Hockington or whether somebody changed, uh, challenges the law of the land. That happens sometimes. Um, I don't personally want to see it get mixed up with medical marijuana, but I also feel like I, um, I need to make sure our community is prepared if it is completely normalized and sold in the store downtown that that we are ready to address that and so I would just almost challenge back to you are you sure we're prepared for that so thank you Could I ask a clarifying question so we have a temporary ban in place now and that would just remain in effect until the permanent if until the permanent ban that expires I think or does August, it expire a date. when yeah. is it okay yeah. I, I believe it's August yeah. this August, this August. Uh -huh. so I think the question August. I, I think <laughs> Let's look at it, and we have someone else. Oh, Jeff. <clears throat> Jeff Doherty, Three Angels Way. So I guess my question to the board is, or um, in this application, uh, for retail sales of medical or recreational marijuana, does this also restrict growing houses? Is there a, is that part of the? Uh, for recreational. Cultivation would be prohibited. So even even with an approved facility, that's correct. So that that kind of restricts somebody that would be in the position that had a facility big enough. It's restricting their right to be able to have a business. Uh, can I just clarify? It, it would not be restricted if you had a medical license to grow. This is strictly for for recreational. Business. No, I'm talking oh, okay. about full scale propagation. Oh, okay, so you're talking about just for business purposes. Correct. Gotcha, okay. Correct. So I, I think that's really restrictive. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I understand the part about restricting retail sales of marijuana or a shop, but to say that you want to 
restrict somebody from growing it if they have an approved facility, then I think that's w way over bounds. I would agree because if it's not safe, there is a restriction on selling it in town recreationally. Why would your business have to be impacted because you're not selling it in town? Correct. So I what I'd like to do is, ju is just we've already put it on the warrant, voted to put it on the warrant. Does anybody feel, and I want to point out that there was an, uh, a ballot vote um, related to it, so does anybody feel that we should pull it off the warrant and not give the public the right to vote on it? So I feel like we're, we're kind no, of No, no, rushing. no, but if we need it voted correctly, mm -hmm. even though they vote a ballot, we need we to can, vote at the town can, meeting too. Yeah, but we can pull it after tonight if we want to. I'm not right, prepared. Sure. I think we need yeah. to keep talking about okay. it. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's move on to the... So the only point I would make, just one point is, why do you need to pull it? If, if you feel the town wants it, then it gets voted in and it votes out. It's putting it in front of the town so the town can make a decision. So Even if you're on one right. side of the article. And, and the that's other. the way it stands now. Right. So that I think that we want to continue the discussion and the two discussion items is do we pull it, vote to pull it, and some members of the board want to, and whether we recommend it or not. Those so, are the two so, steps. So I, I also would like to point out, though, is if we make a vote to pull it, we are left without recourse when the, August. the Correct. August August August. expires. Correct. So it's a bigger question Correct. in my mind. Correct. I agree. To pull it or not. Correct. Exactly. Right. Okay, so we're going to table it to and we'll set the time and place to be discussed. But do we hear from all the members of the public about it? Because we, we can talk about it Any other additional members later. of the... Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. I think if we, just to comment on that, I think if we don't pull it, the public is going to have plenty of time to comment on it. Right. But we still have but to tonight. discuss. No, I know, right. I know. Just to discuss other so yes. what we have to do <laughs> is I'd like to open the, um, public hearing. the public hearing and then continue the public hearing that we should have opened at 9 o'clock. Okay, thank you everyone from the, okay. from, the, from Zach, thank you. Okay, I we still have some uh, Zach items on. Yeah. No, what Zach, I'm doing oh, that's, that's is... The Zach. That's the end of Zach. Okay, the, the Zach, the next one Okay. John, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, John. So we still have one other item related to, and that's the, the lighting issue, but we had a public hearing starting at 9 o'clock, so what we have to do is open the public hearing, then vote to continue the public hearing so we can either finish the discussion or decide to move it. I okay. will make that motion to open and continue. Second. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. So carried. Okay. The one remaining item, which is the lighting item, Elaine. This was something that came from your yeah, This is Muriel. Right. This is Muriel. <laughs> um, so um, I think I would like to keep it open and um, and uh, and have a chance to talk about it more. Um, I know that um, I, I, what I most wanted to do is hear if there's anybody here that wants to speak to it so we have their input while they're here and that we hold on to it to talk about it more fully when we have more time. Okay. Anybody from the public? Hmm. Hi, Mike Cavanaugh for Osceola Drive. Um, this doesn't directly affect me because 52 South Street was built over a decade ago. Um, so I notice in here that you want to have interior lights turned off at night. And um, I got a lot of pushback from EMC on that because um, for safety reasons, and I think it was really about vandalism, they wanted the building to be lit all night long. So what they did was they pulled the blinds, but there's a lot of light coming through the blinds and around the blinds, and the blinds are old and sometimes they're open. And then the other thing is, is they have glass stairwells and those lights are really bright, but luckily for me, they face South Street. So this is great. This lighting proposal is really good, but I think you're gonna. It's, I think it's gonna be a lot more complicated than you think <coughs> in terms of. Uh, if, if I could comment, I, I would agree with um, what you said. I, working in the business that I work in, lighting is a necessity in the evening for safety reasons um, and also to prevent um, break-ins and thefts and so forth. So I'm not sure it's going to be as easy as saying that buildings should not 
be lit or should be lit. I think we maybe can talk about the types of lighting that we require in the evening or how much lighting they're allowed to have. Um, but I don't think it's going to be as, as easily as uh, straightforward as they cannot be lit. I do feel like it's a bigger discussion. But yeah, okay. I, would, I would agree with you 100%. Good luck with that. Thank okay. you. Thank Anybody you. else Thank from you. the public want to discuss that? <clears throat> Okay, so we can agree. So we've made motions on the other ones. Can we do a single motion to continue the public hearing on the open items? Point of discussion, though. Uh, you definitely don't want to vote on this now. And I think Muriel has the direct has said that you open more discussion. So I would I would like this board to have an opportunity to talk about. It. I think that um, we need to be prepared um, with specificity. Um, I appreciate the starting point a lot, right. um, and I, I, we just need to be, um, I, I feel like this, I would like to talk about it more, yes, before we vote okay. on it, but the decision is not just whether or not we want it, I, I mean, I want something, uh, but whether or not we think it's the right time okay. to, to do it this year. Okay, let's continue the, Thank you. so uh, when can we continue discussion on these items? I would recommend okay. the next meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. So could it be March 12th at 7.30. Christine Julie, could we close the public hearing and just discuss it amongst ourselves so we don't have to specify a time on the agenda for it? It's up to you. The, the public hearing is only open so that you can hear from the public. If you feel that you need to hear more, you should be okay. That would be a good idea. Okay. I think it would be okay. more flexible want to make a motion? So I'd make a motion to close the public hearing and um, like I second the motion. But table the discussion. Or do I have to say But table the discussion for now on that. So um, I, I celebrate that from an efficiency standpoint. I truly do. Um, I think that I uh, I brought that kind of idea up earlier, and there was a very cogent point made that um, you know leaving comment the hearing open so that the public has an opportunity to impact it is almost always a good idea, whether or not it's the most efficient idea. <laughs> yeah, it's transparent. Okay. I yeah. can go either way. But so I I mean I would I would my, my choice would be to, to keep. Public so what I would like to suggest is somebody okay. make a motion to continue the public hearing till March 12th at 7:30. I'll make a motion to continue the public hearing on March 12th at 7:30. Second. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So carried. Although I do love efficiency <laughs> whenever possible. Okay. Can we have a motion uh, to reopen the? Reopen the. <coughs> so moved. Um, up for the trails at Legacy Farms. So we have a first, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. And Cliff, you have agreed to be the. I have. Can we get the applicant? Okay, if, if I may just give a, a, a disclaimer here that this is my first time taking on one of these like this. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to look, look, look to my, 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 my brethren and sisters to help me through this. So uh, Director of Land Use um, and Town Operations Overview and Site uh, Location of Legacy Farms uh, development. Uh, the applicant is looking to um, make an amendment to the approved master plan. Um, and you can have Elaine continue just kind of explaining it. it could you do that for me? I can do that. Thank you. Some of that. Um, so I just wanted to go back a little bit and say that you know we're in year eight of Legacy Farms. Um, the special permit was issued back in 2010, and construction began pretty shortly thereafter. And this is the final residential piece. So it's at this point um, when I think we start looking back at special permit conditions and see where we are and wrapping some things up. So as this goes forward, I'm going to be looking back at that special permit to see what other conditions you might want to look at, other um, things that the board hasn't yet addressed as far as mostly traffic. Um, so. Um, 
Regarding this particular development, um, just wanted to mention that 180 age-restricted units, which town meeting voted <coughs> a couple of years ago to allow in the area that was originally slated for uh, commercial, <coughs> and so now it's going to be a uh, residential development, which town meeting said was okay. 10% of the units will be affordable uh, to low-moderate incomes, um, and the access will be to Legacy Farms North, will be to Wilson Street, there's a street onto Wilson Street, and into the uh, North Villages, which the board approved uh, recently. Um, I also want to mention that Wilson Street is a scenic road, so when we look at the impacts in that area, I want to think about the, the streetscape <coughs> of Wilson Street uh, going forward. And a lot of the trees have been removed there over the years as well. Um, and um, so one of the things that I've asked the developer to provide that mentions in the uh, special permit is looking at the intersection of East Main and Legacy Farms North and South. And is this the time to put in the traffic light? I feel a lot of questions from residents about the traffic there, indicating that they feel it's unsafe and it's time for the traffic light, which is all wired and ready to go whenever it's needed. So I think that's something that should be part of this review <coughs> as go forward in this process is looking at whether this is the time for that, for that traffic light. And as I said, I'll be going through the, um, the other conditions to see if there's any other things the board needs to wrap up in this kind of as we get toward the end of legacy. After this, there's still some commercial pieces, but this is the last residential piece. Thank you. So with that being said, um, yes. Mr. Chair, if I could address Elaine's comments on the traffic. I'm sure that's going to be one of the questions. Okay, the why don't we hold that? Because that's, that's, that's later on when we discuss traffic issues. So we want the applicant to be able to. So they are working to provide. Them. Okay. Okay, so in, the, in our breakdown of how we're going to go through the discussion, um, we have um, an app, the applicant presentation overview, our general overview. If you want, we'd like to do that, we'd appreciate that. Absolutely. Okay. Why don't you say a couple of words? Sure. Uh, before um, my engineer gives you a little yeah. overview, I'd just like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Vin Gately, and I will be the developer for the trails. Um, my company, Heritage Properties, is based out of Sudbury. Uh, we have built about 450 units, half of which are single family homes, <coughs> and half of which are, have been condominiums spread over about 12 communities. Um, our largest community has been 45 units. Um, this project, as you know, is 180 units. We plan on doing it in phases, four phases. Uh, each phase will be, I think the first phase will be 40 units, and they will be the 40, uh, 40 closest units to Legacy Farms North Road, uh, including our clubhouse. Our clubhouse is really the closest um, structure to the road. And we plan on building that first. Uh, that will establish a nice street presence for the community and with traffic going by. And that will act as our sales office for quite some time before residents move in and take it over. There'll be a fitness center there. There'll be a, uh, a meeting room and uh, a post office. All the mail will be delivered there. And it'll also be a place where socially people will get to see each other since They'll be picking up their mail there daily. Um, <clears throat> altogether, I expect that this is going to take five, six years. Um, this is different than the communities that have been developed uh, to date in that it is age-restricted. And being age-restricted, we're going to be selling out at a, a slower rate. Um, I'd love to achieve the kind of rates that they're achieving right now over there, but that just is not the case with 55 and over. Um, I expect we'll probably have 30 to 40 units uh, a year uh, sold. Um, like I said, probably six years altogether. Uh, the communities have two sections to them. The northwest section is where we're starting out, and that's 134 units. And then the, uh, the right section there, the east section, is 46 units. Right now, we're hoping um, to get through your board and get approved and be able to break ground in, um, in May. We're hoping to have um, a half dozen, maybe 10 units completed, transferred to owners 
also the clubhouse built this year, later this year. Um, <coughs> the other common amenities we'll have, which we'll go over, will be a, uh, we have two, which is uh, a dog park. We found that this market um, loves their pets, and this will be a place where people can sit down in a fenced-in area, let the dogs play, and uh, talk to one another. Also, right next to that dog park will be a, a community garden, which will be about three quarters of an acre. And um, again, uh, I've developed many condominium kind of communities, and this one in particular, people. This is a discriminating home buyer. These are people who have probably owned several homes in their lives, and they kind of know what they want. They uh, they are willing to pay for what they want, and we expect to be accommodating them. We're going to have a almost a limitless list of extras, uh, upgrades that they can choose from. Uh, that's very much different from the community that's there now. Um, and again, we're, we have a discriminating home buyer that um, we, we need to appeal to. The community garden is a way to appease people who have had, um, like I said, several homes maybe in their lives so far. And they, they're used to being able to go outside maybe and play around a little bit, putter around in the garden. Uh, in front of their home. That's not usually what can happen here because that will all be under contract uh, with a landscaper. So this will give them a place that they can go and, and garden and over time the owners will decide exactly how that um, community garden you is. You want to just point works. out where the yeah. dog part of the community garden is? I, I can walk. Sure. Okay. I think I'm pretty much done maybe. Okay. okay. Good. Uh, for the record, my name is Michael Dryden. I'm a project manager with Boiler Engineering. And before I give you a high-level overview of the plan, I thought I would just give you an update of the permitting status as it is today. We have been before the Design Review Board on two occasions. Uh, the board uh, spoke very complimentary of the project, uh, not only in terms of the site layout, landscaping, but of course the architectural design that VIN has put forth. Uh, we have received a positive recommendation to this board. I realize we have two members of the DRB on this board as well. Uh, we are currently before the Conservation Commission. That process is open and ongoing. In fact, we'll be before the Commission again tomorrow evening. Uh, to date, we have reconciled all of the technical comments uh, through Beta Group uh, with the Conservation Commission and believe that we are poised potentially for, uh, to close the process with the Commission tomorrow evening. So I thought that would be helpful just to bring up the speed on that. Uh, just a very high-level overview of the plan. Again, you've already heard some of the details from Vin. Uh, I think everybody is familiar with the general location of the site. It's in the extreme northwest corner uh, of the project site of Legacy Farms, that is. Uh, this is Legacy Farms North here, uh, Wilson Street, and the Ashland Hawkington Town Line is here. Uh, of course, this is Walnut Way, which is a portion of the faulty development uh, to the southeast. In terms of existing conditions, it's primarily open meadow for the vast majority. Obviously, it's, it's prior use. Uh, being a nursery, there is a network of um, trails and uh, access roads throughout the project site. There is a pretty sizable wetland area that bisects the project site and flows uh, into the Hopkinton Reservoir eventually. Topographic relief, the high point of the site is generally here. The low point, as I pointed out, is the uh, extreme low area of the wetland here. There's a little over 100 feet of overall topographic relief, which sounds very severe, but the vast majority of the development is away from the very severe uh, slopes at the site. Proposed conditions, as Vin uh, gave you the, some high-level details, there are two components. There's the, uh, the west side here, which is phase one through three, phases one through three, generally between 40 and 50 units uh, per phase. And then the final phase, phase four, uh, with the balance of the units, 46 units on the east side. So again, jumping back to the west, access is afforded via a boulevard entry in this location. Uh, those, that's a, again a boulevard with 20-foot uh, wide lanes each direction. There's a second entry proposed on Wilson Street in this location. And the main road, Road A, loops back on itself, and there are two uh, 5 to 550-foot long cul-de-sac. Um, roadways that terminate here and here. 
On the east side, there's a single access point. Again, it's a very similar boulevard uh, configuration. It is proposed off of Walnut Way, which is currently under construction. Uh, this is a loop road. All of the roads are 20 feet in width in accordance with the design guidelines and the special permit. And all of the roadways have sidewalks associated with them on one side. All in total, we have about 56, 5,700 linear feet of roadway. The vast majority of the roadways are 5% grade or less. There are some that exceed, uh, slightly exceed that. I believe the steepest roadway we have is about 6.3%. Uh, quickly about drainage, I don't want to get too far into the details, but just again, high level overview. There are a total of five basins proposed, one on the east side, two main basins on the west side, and then two bioretention areas that were modified as part of the project. Those were previously designed and constructed as part of the roadway network. Utilities are all readily available at the site. Stubs were placed uh, in anticipation of this development, water, sewer, power, and gas in this general location and same on the east side where utility stubs were left in place in anticipation of this development. Vin gave you a little bit of uh, a flavor of the amenities. I'll just walk you through those. Again, the clubhouse is located here. It's about 3,000 square feet, correct? That's right. Uh, outdoor patio, seat walls. Um, it has its own parking area. Uh, it's it's uh, heavily landscaped, as you'll see in the plan set. <coughs> the community garden that Vin had mentioned is here. That's about three quarters of an acre. The dog park is just to the south of that. That's about a half an acre. And off of road E in this location, we have a dedicated parking area, a handicapped accessible uh, walkway to that, both of those amenities. And another trail link from the amenities uh, to a pocket park that is located just to the west of the main entry in this location. There are Numerous par pocket parks located throughout the development. I, I pointed this one out. There's another one in this location. There's a, a small park and overlook area at the end of road D in this location. And finally, another pocket park here. These are very simple, small gathering areas uh, with, with seating, <coughs> very simply. Uh, very tastefully designed, as you'll note in the landscape uh, drawings. I'm sorry, this is what you just said. Some, can you say it? With what? With Little pocket parks with? Seating areas. Seating. Yep. Yeah. Finally, the trail system, it's probably very difficult to see. You probably see it better on the screen. Uh, there's, as I mentioned previously, there are sidewalks on one side of the entire roadway network. And to supplement that, there's cross-country trails proposed in this location, which loop back around the site. There's an east-west trail connection here, which utilizes uh, an historic wetland crossing. We're proposing a small footbridge at this very narrow wetland crossing here. Uh, there's a second trail connection that actually connects to the south side of Leg Legacy Farm North. That trail runs in this location. And then as I pointed out earlier, this leg of the trail system. So it's a very walkable community. Uh, the trail system, the woodland trails in combination with the sidewalks that are located on the roadways. The landscaping is very generous. Uh, we've provided uh, comprehensive landscaping in the package. Again, the clubhouse is heavily landscaped. Uh, there are street trees on both sides of the roadway, privacy plantings between the units, as you see on the plan. Um, uh, so again, heavily landscaped. Uh, we did provide typical unit planting details in the plan set, which give you a flavor of the, uh, the order of magnitude of landscaping that, would be that will be provided between each and every one of the units. That's a very high level overview. Um, I was going to mention comments, but it looks like that may be next on the agenda for data group. I hope I've given you enough high level information about the project. I realize as the meeting progresses, we'll get into these elements in greater detail. Thank you. You're welcome. If I can interject, what might be helpful, very top level, just for everyone, how does this differ from what was the original? Plan. We didn't do a site plan review, but the original layout, for lack of a better term. It was an office park. Yeah. No, but we, <laughs> but we looked at, at this basic configuration <coughs> with the approval of the 55 and over, but there is a, where do you want to address it? Just a couple of minutes, nothing sure. major. So 
as you, some of you may recall, when we went to town meeting the second time, we had a plan which basically had these areas very similarly to where they are. I would say, give or take, 85, 90 percent of the general location of that plan is represented by this plan. It's, as Elaine said, it's totally different than the commercial plan. Right. But when you looked at what was voted on town meeting, this is very, very similar. Okay. Thank we you. Have, we have a copy of that at some point if you need it. Okay. Anyway, Thank you. Helpful. Okay. Okay. okay, so as we move forward, um, we would uh, entertain Phil to come up and give us some of his uh, recommendations for the project. Um, thank you, Cliff. Uh, for the record, Phil Paradis with Beta Group. Uh, we've been uh, tasked with uh, reviewing this project for the, for the board as well as uh, for the Conservation Commission. Um, and just as was shared earlier, the Conservation Commission reviews went a little bit ahead of this. Um, so we've already had a couple rounds of reviews related to stormwater management. The stormwater management has been designed uh, in accordance with the um, <coughs> Massachusetts stormwater management standards, as well as your, um, your, your the, the town of Hopkins and stormwater standards. Um, so there's a, there's a few conditions, but I think that's going to be worked out with conservation. <coughs> Um, having said that, this is a this is a project that's been it has been vetted. The, the design standards has been vetted uh, several times already. So the, the developer has done a, a great job in terms of meeting the the standards uh, as as outlined in your uh, the, the design standards in your permit. Um, they meet the the requirements for the roadway width, uh, profile grades, uh, sidewalks. Um, uh, lighting, um, you know, basically all the, and we had some minor comments, uh, and a lot of, uh, some of them were um, subjective. You know, when we, whenever we use the word consider, it's not mandatory, it's, uh, you know, what a com kind of professional opinion, so uh, a lot of those comments we leave, we leave uh, to your discretion or the discretion of the, of the developer. He's going to have to live with it. Um, we did, we did do a little bit more attention to any landscaping that was right off of um, Legacy Farms Road North. Uh, I, we think they did a, 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 a decent job uh, in, that, in that area. Um, I don't know if you want to go, we'll go through all the comments, but. Um, well, br just briefly, if you would, just, just to give them a little bit of a, of a, of a background for that. <laughs> um, well, some of them had to do with connecting um, crosswalks and, and walkways, um, so there's been some minor changes relative to those. Um, there's some minor details that we, we, we wanted. Um, um, there's not a whole lot, really, Mo most, most of it entails planting and, and shading and, and screening. screening. Right, right, right. Um, but, but basically, we, we have the crux of the idea as, as being a viable. Um, yeah, but we think it's a very well-designed plan. So. OK. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate yeah. that. I have a question for Phil? Yeah, before he leaves. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yes. So Phil, uh, do you have? Uh, as an engineer, insights onto safety concerns being that close to the gas tanks. Um, that was a that was raised during the uh, uh, permit process, and I think that was, as far as I know, that was uh, vetted in terms of uh, uh, the, the the challenge uh, relative to the to the gas tanks. I, I didn't spend a whole lot of time reviewing that. Um, is that similar in writing? Well, you know, I think that Roy, why don't you touch on that? We actually spent the better part of the year with the planning board, with various consultants that the planning board had hired, consultants that we had hired, and as Phil said, that has been totally vetted. Uh, it was the opinion and judgment of the um, planning board at that time and the consultants. <clears throat> we actually put in a, a numerous gas lights, and the idea was is is remote remote is the possibility is if in fact there were ever a situation 
those lights serve <coughs> as an igniter to send whatever it is back to the plant. So it's, it's the opinion of all the consultants, and there's many, many reports have been done on it that it's not an issue. Yes. Have the have the have the igniter lights been put in? Oh yeah. Yes. yes. They're all installed. Um, if I may comment on that, is that you and I were on the board at the time of that discussion anyway, and we went through that that whole process, and it was extremely vetted. From from my memory, I, I do not remember it being totally okay. We have new board members, and maybe we could have uh, our new board members put up to speed on, on that situation. Um, and I just for timing, well, I'd yeah. like at 940, we, we continue because we have other things on the agenda. All right. So just I'm, I'm, I'm happy to send so. Elaine the reports, and Elaine can distribute it to the board. Thank you. Yeah, we might for want to table any discussion for that. For that, yeah, we will, I, I think that's what we'll, we'll, we'll do if we take, if we want to take a vote on we, that. Is that we no, take? we don't have to. We're, we're, we go. Information. Just, okay. So, okay. Right, sorry. To okay. You. Yep. Uh, go I ahead. had one question for Phil while he's up there. I'm all set. Thanks, Fred. Um, so, Phil, uh, would, are they requesting any waivers mm. as far as the? No. So, question about for the uh, the buffers. What size is, size is the buffers for Osmod? Like. Say that again. Do they have a buffer zone for like against the street or the property? Setbacks. Property buffers. Setbacks. <coughs> um, I don't believe your permit required setbacks. Okay, I have to read up on that again. We went. We we we, we just went okay. through the okay. whatever right. whatever was in your permit. We noted on the on Thank our. Thank you. And this is, by the way, we've already. I just issued a second review, kind of update with with the changes. So February twenty six. Yeah. yeah so. Does anyone else have any questions for Phil? On the board, um, we have a, a, a member of the public. Could you want to step up? Just before she finishes, just to follow up, <coughs> good timing. Just my only concern that I was talking about the buffers is uh, along the street that looks very close. That the, the okay. actual homes are very close to the street. So okay. I just wanted to put yeah, context. and then we can bring that up. Yeah, I just want to put context. Okay. <coughs> okay. Yes, you, you state your name and your yes, address. Yes, my name is Katie Towner, and I live on Kruger Road, which would be the road that was not clearly marked on the on the site plan there, but it is a residential road that will be probably the most impacted by this, this whole plan. So I think, you know, it would have been nice if you at least marked it. <laughs> but my uh, comment tonight has to do with... Um, uh, the, when the Legacy Farm Road North was constructed, um, there was very little regard for the Wilson Street <coughs> conditions. Uh, there was a large amount of water runoff, which froze, and was a safety hazard for months and months. Um, nothing was done about it. The, um, the builder had no concern about it. Um, calls to the town, nothing happened. So for months and months and months, the people who live there had to, had to uh, drive up over ice roads. Um, given that Wilson Street is a very, very narrow, you can barely get two cars by, um, and it does drop steeply down. Um, during this <coughs> first phase of construction, you, you pretty much um, cut straight to the road, just clear cut to the road, which was the cause of the drainage problem. And it looks like you plan to do the same thing again <laughs> by the looks of your plan. So, um, so my comment is um, I don't see that the plan really protects the safety of the people who live there, and I, I just, don't see a lot of concern for for you know I'm, how we're impacted. I understand, uh, and what I, th Roy, if you would like to, I'd actually like to address her concern. She's absolutely right. Frankly, when the road was built, when the road was built, if we all remember that that road contract was a public bid situation, so the town actually was in charge of the road, even though it was on our property because of the way it was constructed. And all of us, including DPW, put a lot of pressure on the builder of the road at the time to address that concern of the neighbors. Unfortunately, they did not do that. 
and she's absolutely right. There was ice in the road. It was, frankly, an unacceptable condition. Uh, not that it's right, but it's over with. I think what you're going to find here is with this plan and the design that it has, and as to Phil's comments, I think, if anything, the water on the road is going to be an improved situation with this development, not the latter. Thank you very much. If I could just add to that very quickly. Sure. So there's a fairly significant drainage area here that does end up along Wilson Street. What we have done in our drainage design is there's a significant swale that picks up runoff from this hillside and actually pipes it through the development so that what it does today, water finds its way all the way down the roadway and eventually to this point. We're picking up that drainage area and intercepting it and piping it to this point to remove that flow from Wilson Street. Thank you for that. All right, okay. so the next item that we would like to discuss is... Um, okay, we've got to move because we're okay. past time, so when so can I, we yeah. continue to... So before we continue, I think they're just looking for general feedback. Can I just give a quick comment? Okay, but I'll make it quick. Okay, because um, my suggestion would be, I know we, uh, Phil was saying we don't have buffer requirements against the road, <coughs> but... Um, <coughs> I think it would, if there's any way you can give some space between the houses and the roads on Wilson Street and also between the, the units and Legacy Farm North, um, <coughs> I think just because it's an Oz, Ozma doesn't mean we should uh, be building right on top of the road. Just some feedback. Okay. I agree. Do you know what that does? The lane, when can we? No, uh, uh, yeah, sure. yeah, it's close on that, at this scale. But it's. Wide open so far. On March 26th. March 26th. And why don't we schedule? Do we have an, an earlier date than that? I would like to see this started to, because it, this this has been on the table for a very long time, and I would like well, to. The only thing is we're, we're pretty full on the. Two hours to Chamberlain Street. Right, Chamberlain Street. And when, when would you have that date for? March 12. So why don't we schedule an hour and a half? On the, 20, on the March 22nd? Right. 26th. 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 <coughs> yeah, that, 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 it, everybody can agree with, with that? Okay. So can we make a <coughs> motion? I'll make to a motion to continue, continue this public hearing to March 26th at 7:30 for uh, one and a half hours. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstain? Well, what are you okay. Yeah. Well, we still have to go. There's an outline which you can pick up out there, and we have to continue. Are you done with Cougar Road? No. 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 no, no, no. no. There's a whole outline that goes into detail on the whole project that we've touched the intro on. So we then have to do details. So there's going to be another numerous hours of further discussion on this. This was the <coughs> intro tonight. Do people have comments? Or does anyone else want to yeah, speak? Yes, sir. Could you step up to the mic for a second, please? Right. And then and then that's got that's yeah. gotta be it for tonight. Yes. This <laughs> John Villa, three Kruger Road. Yep. Um, I'm actually a little shocked at this whole you know, I, I went to a meeting several years ago when uh, Legacy Farm started, you know, to, this process. And back then, I'll, I'll just tell you my concerns, and I'm the first house on the street, is in this plan that you have here, you've got this road coming out almost into Kruger Road. The traffic there is bad enough today, not with another 180 units in, that you're going to have a, a road coming out right next to Kruger on a tough <coughs> corner. So I was told a couple, four or five years ago that, oh yeah, we'll, we won't put no roads there, we'll put them out into Legacy. So I'd like to see that road disappear off this plan. I'd also like to see the area we, at the end of Kruger Road, which is the, the last of the woods that we have anymore. Uh, I see trails going through it. We're gonna cut down trees. It was turned into a, uh, uh, you know, the trees were wiped out all on that whole Wilson Street section. But it's a scenic roadway, so I don't know how you're going to go and cut through the trails there. So that's, that's my personal opinion here, and 
Well, I'm just surprised at how quick this thing went. No, 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 no. We're, I know we're not now, but we're very post, beginning. postponing. Right. Sure. Beginning. I understand that. That's right. why I'm here okay, to no, express my it. concerns. And we're, we're glad to hear that. Now, the, the thing that I'd like to rebut with yeah. that is for you is, is this, is that through the process, you'll start to hear what the developers are intending to do, how to make it right, or, or to, to make the yeah. changes that we need to make. Yes, yes, um, yes. Your voice is going to be heard just like everybody else's that, okay. that comes to meeting. So I just wanted to get that on the table. That's Thank good. You. Thank, Excuse thanks. Me. Excuse me. Developers, Thank you. Developers, I'm not against developing. It's sure. there. We can live with it. But let's not take away what we've had. Absolutely. Absolutely. And your, you. your voice is heard. Thank uh, you. Through the chair. Excuse me. So Kruger Road is not on any of our maps. Oh, that's this, see. It's this, it's this road it's coming. Right. Right. Is there any way we can um, get take a ride down and take a look? No, no I, I, I'm asking if we can get it in our documentation. For next time. For next time, so that we have a, a visual in our documentation so that we can see it better. Um, yeah, I mean, I can certainly drive there and see where it is, but to see it on our actual documentation would be very helpful. I could give you a blow up of the area. Yeah, that would be very good. That would be and, maybe, and, maybe, and maybe just make it in, incorporated into the overall view so that we, we know that the, the people live there. Right. Yeah. Just, I, didn't, I didn't want her to think that we were trying to obscure that. This is an aerial photograph, so you'll note that all of the roads are very difficult to see, sure. with the exception of Legacy Farm, which is on the wide open. Right. But in the, and if I may, on that aerial that you have, I don't want to mistake but there's no trees on that road anymore. On so, Wilson? So in, yeah. your, in your section that you got here, where Wilson Street is, there's no trees here. Yeah, Those are all taken water. down. Yeah. 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 Cut down yeah. They're all gone now. They're all wiped out in the hmm. last collapse. Okay. Now you want to put... It's, it's right. It's right there. Right here. Well, let's let, let let's stop that, uh, uh, sir. If, if you may, please. Thank you very much. Um, yes, Muriel. Mm -hmm. So, can I ask Elaine to just give us um, the the town's perspective on that? So, Wilson Street is in, in its entirety a scenic road. Yes. And um, we did lose a whole stretch of trees several years ago because of this. Because of yeah. some construction activity. Yeah. It was a it was a planning board discussion at the time. What, what we did was uh, Ken, myself, someone else were covered Wilson Street, and uh, the electric company was looking for trees to trim and cut back. And then there was also issues with some trees on the NSTAR property that had some issues with. And then further on where the construction is, that's kind of the newer. Um, changes as far as what trees were taken down. But if there were any trees taken down within the, the right of way, uh, I don't think we've been notified. I think they're outside. They're outside. Okay. They're outside. Okay. There were at least three trees taken down okay. between the town's right of way. And then right there, Could you? Okay. Could we're going to have to hold up for We have another public right. hearing that is now down to 13 minutes. So we've got an hour and a half. So excuse us. Excuse us so for that. We, we, we want to okay. listen to you, but we're trying to take into account, you know, people who are here for the other public hearing that we're already late for. So thank you all for coming for this one, and so we hope to have you show up again. On the 26th <coughs> at 7.30 to 9 o'clock. An hour and a half on the 26th. There is, a, a, and I suggest there's an outline on the table. There should still be copies out there, um, and we follow the outline. Can I ask the board? I would like a, a solid understanding of the impact on Wilson Street to date as far as the scenic road. I understand that it was previous boards who had the conversation and so forth, but I'd like to understand the, the okay. impact in, in its cumulative so we know what we're okay. doing going forward to that road. Okay. And we can all drive by it. In oh, definitely. Time. I mean, yeah. we're there. We'll, yeah. yeah. But, um, but would, I that, don't would that be okay with you guys to, to give us a, a, an exactly. overview of that aspect of it? Well, I think it's actually Roy, Roy probably on. Just okay, why don't we do, we can have discussion on, I want to get to the public hearing because there are people here. We can work through a lane on, on asking for the information and have it available at the next meeting. Okay, so I'm, uh, do we make a motion to? Make a motion. We already made the motion. We did. And seconded. Okay. All I have to do. All okay. Those, all those in favor? No, we, did we vote? No. no? Okay. Aye. So let's figure out what we're voting for to, to continue the to meeting. To continue, continue the meeting okay. on, on the 26th. To 7.30. To 7.30 for an hour and a half. An hour and a half. For an hour and a half. Yeah. Um, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? 
All those to abstain? Thank you. Motion carries. Thanks for your time. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. And again, grab the, uh, if you want to look at it, it's also on the town website. I know it's an extensive outline that we're going to be going through. Uh, public hearing, Maspinock Woods, West Elm Street. Oh, they'll, they'll bring it up now. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you, everybody. And that's proposed to continue? Okay. So we have to make a motion. So, so, so I make a motion. Uh, 26th at 9. 26th at 9. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're moving Last Canuck Woods to the 26th. Oh. 26th. Right. So we didn't know the discussion. No, of course, I okay. didn't realize I looked at the. <laughs> okay. The, um, I thought so we have a couple of items. Who's here on. Um, uh, let's go down. Uh, discussion 8486 88 92 West Main Street. Yes. Yeah, I have to, I have to step up. <laughs> yeah. See ya. See ya. I'll be back. Last month, but we never did our You want to start because we're already. If you want to introduce yourself. Yep. And uh, yes. For the uh, for the record, my name is Pete Barbarian, attorney with Fletcher Tilton. Uh, on behalf of the applicant, we have a uh, number of engineers, consultants, traffic report, <coughs> uh, to give the board a, 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 an update in regards to the changes to the to the gasoline station that I guess you're all familiar with, 92 West Main Street. Um, the applicant uh, has acquired an adjacent piece of property is under agreement to acquire additional property. So the gas station, as you can see on that plan, will extend from the existing location all the way out to Lumber Street. Uh, so when we're done, the size of the project increases to 73,000 square feet. There's an existing, as you know, gasoline uh, service station there with uh, tanks in the front of that. Um, in operations, including a, a donut operations with inside, um, so this is and parking be on both sides of the yeah. existing building. A We're going to go all the way to the end of to Elm Street. So, can I ask a process question here? I mean, we usually don't just tack on a project like this at the end of our meetings. It's well, this is an intro, Doug. It's a. Okay. It's not right. a hearing. It's just not an a hearing. Informal. Okay, it's an but informal, we, for the, right. we I mean, just. Right, so we have to start the public I mean, hearing. I mean, no, right, so hear me out for a second, yeah. John. Just we, we don't usually do this. Yes, right? we, we usually do. assign a scheduled time for even a, a not a, a for this for a public hearing. We do no for even informal. Discussion. No, we've we've done this before. So they haven't made an application. They haven't. You brought correct. Okay. So we have filed with the zoning board of appeals. Uh, there were a number of special permits required for, for the expense, uh, extension of the use. We were also in a watershed uh, protection district. Uh, so the special permits from the viewpoint of the uh, increased operation size, the buildings going from roughly 1,800 square feet to roughly 3,400 square feet. Uh, we are providing 24 parking spaces, uh, both sides of the buildings as, as well as on the front. Uh, the brown areas on each side of the, the building, which is in the middle of the, of the canopies for the islands of that. Um, the, the gasoline tanks themselves, you can see. Uh, can you just point out, just uh, because it's kind of hard to tell from the area, what is what? Okay. Um, Could you turn it a little bit? Yes. Yeah. I'm having a hard time seeing it. It, it might be helpful <laughs> if you move it all the way back so we can see the large screen behind you. <laughs> uh, does that make sense? No? This, well, this, this would be the proposed new building, side. generally in the area where the again. existing building is, a little yeah. expansion to the east. This is a set of gasoline islands. This is a set of gasoline islands. These are the underground storage tanks. Okay. Maintaining two entrances on the front, moving the existing entry a little bit farther down, and this one farther down as well. This entry is a little bit moved over, and this is a new entry. Okay. So what might be helpful is, you want to do an outline now where the existing structure is? The existing lot is roughly roughly here, and again, the existing building is roughly in this okay. location. There's a grass strip that kind of comes through there. Right. Uh, and then there's the existing house mm -hmm. uh, and the property associated with that. Okay. So 
from the viewpoint of the operations, it's essentially the continued operations of the same thing. The one we are we are looking to add some outside seating. We are looking to add some some stools inside. But kind of the, what you see is kind of today's full service gasoline station, for example, across the street. That type of food service, that type of operations, uh, all the, the shell seasons, if you've seen those, kind of upgrading the whole facility, uh, both interior, exterior drainage systems, new tanks, the whole deal to upgrade the property. So we need a special, a number of special permits because of the aquifer uh, issue. Uh, the unique <coughs> circumstance we have here is we're surrounded by three streets. So technically we've got to provide building setback from all of those. So one of the other aspects we need is a variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals. The existing building is less than 30 feet. This building is also less than 30 feet. Uh, we had a ZBA hearing that had been scheduled for February 7th, but because of the storm at that thing, that has been put off until this week. So we had anticipating having an initial meeting with them before we came to you, but well, it did not allow that. We also have a CONCOM meeting tomorrow night. So the gist of meeting informally with you folks was kind of just to lay it out, make sure everybody is understanding what we're proposing to do so that we can address all the issues and concerns so everybody's on the same page when we get to the end of the day. And we again, we have a traffic consultant just, here. We have architectural here, whatever you want to get Just to think, to. pumps, number of pumps going from what to what? Uh, right now, there are, what, uh, two and we're going to uh, four islands, so it would be eight for that. The, the size of the underground tanks basically doesn't change. We're at 40,000 gallons. Okay, just have to refill it more. Safety is a major concern it's where the most accidents are in town. Um, is that why you're moving this, the entrance entrance ways to help a little bit? Is that? Uh, yeah, we did a whole, probably that whole design traffic and, and what our parking site visibility is good. The, the the signals there break up, so you can turn it in and out of the site. Mm. Uh, in this operation, works very well because if you're coming from the east, you you got good visibility <coughs> to see the the islands on immediately they are full if they're full you can go over to the other way if you just go in the station you can pull into the parking spaces just in front of the station so the layout works very well operationally uh, everything is cameraed for fire protection and in, in, in fire visibility are you aware of the uh, changes that are un will be underway in regards to the passing lane turning lanes uh, from yeah <laughs> we're aware of that and we filed you want to uh, for the record, Aaron Fredette with McMahon Associates. So we did um, coordinate a little bit with town staff about uh, future developments, future um, roadway improvement projects, and so we have incorporated the westbound right turn lane on West Main Street as part of our analysis. So that's that is included. So for, I'm not following you. Can you speak to the improvements for the intersection? Uh, uh, historically, um, <laughs> across the street from there, uh, we're at the corner where Starbucks is. Uh, there's a. A 10 to 12 foot lane coming yeah, in. But she for said westbound. Did she right. mean eastbound? Oh, I meant eastbound. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. West Main Street, eastbound direction. Yeah. Yeah. My apologies. Yeah. But also, I assumed you meant coming in from the back entrance uh, <coughs> if you're coming from the from east. From Elm Street. From coming from the west. Um, so, what we included. They won't be crossing the street anymore. They'll be going around to the back entrance. Oh, from here um, from the Starbucks Plaza or? From the okay. westbound. So heading westbound. No, no, no. Heading, heading from eastbound. Heading eastbound, taking a left into your property. Gotcha. So we're current. These two sites are two. These two site driveways are currently proposed as full access. They're they're relocated and and, and cleaned up a little bit from what are the existing accesses, which I think as um, was mentioned, the which will help with circulation on site, but also help organize some of the traffic. I think one of my, our concerns as a safety feature is that, uh, from what I was remembering from discussions, that the gas station, as it stood at the time, would not have people crossing from the west lane, eastbound lanes, directly into that gas station, be crossing traffic where the accidents mm -hmm. occur. Um, and that's maybe something to think about. Uh, yeah, we, we have made uh, an application just what, last week with Mass DOT to look at how they want to address right hand or limited right hand and, and left turn movements in and out of the site. 
That is the number one location through, of through accidents. Through the chair. In, yeah. in addition to what Frank's saying, I've heard about that, you know, expanding and that project. I'd like to know more about when it's going to happen and maybe a quick overview of it so we can, we can, you know, address <coughs> this application right. better. Is that I mean, something we can ask for? Or, uh, right, I mean, it doesn't have to be right now. I mean, right. just of the materials and is that something we can do at the time of the right turn lane? Yeah, yeah, just like when we anticipate it's going to happen and roughly is it going to have an island in the middle there or is it it's going to remain open to, to Frank's point of taking left turns in from the, the west, the eastbound lane. Just, just a little bit more information about that project. Okay. Well, it's kind of, the board has a consultant designing that. And right. then once it's designed, you probably have to go to town meeting for funding. Right. Okay, we we may have a consultant designing it, but I, haven't seen, it. But I haven't seen it. Right. So Beta Group uh, has been hired by the board to... Uh, right. give, can we ask them to give Let's us a board? presentation? Yes. <coughs> it's been a while. And, uh, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we have some private funding as well, and then... Yeah, yeah, no, I just... Separate kitty. Okay. <laughs> okay. So again, with, with the exception of the, the setback to, to Elm Street, basically the plan complies with everything from the viewpoint of site layout. Uh, we have our civil engineer who can take you through everything you want. We're moving things a little bit further back from the wetland areas uh, and doing those type of things as well. We're improving the drainage system. Again, parking spaces comply both as the number and as well as design. Uh, we got extensive landscaping plan that's up there. Uh, we also have, we can take you through building elevations if you want us to do that, because um, we have those plans and that's not my. <laughs> I think at, well, as people, do you want to do that now, or yeah, why don't you do it quickly? I'll give you five okay. minutes. Who's going to The one item that we're also in front of the Zoning Board of Appeals, you'll see from the viewpoint of the, the renderings, is the sign location. Uh, there's a provision in the bylaw that says the sign can't be above the roof line. It's actually on an element, but it's above the front base roof line, so we've asked for that request, which seems to be similar from the viewpoint of the operators across the street. Jesse Johnson, Bullard Engineering, Civil Engineers for the applicant. You just get this so you guys can all see this. So I'd like to get back a little bit more in angle. So again, just to reiterate, the store is proposed in the middle of the parcel, 3,800 square feet plus or minus. Parking is designed around the three sides of the store here with the canopies on either end, with first full circulation around the canopies. So that provides a lot of safety and access around that. We do have full two-way access throughout the site, all the way around all the canopies in front of the store, and also out of the four egress locations that you have for the site, two on West Main, two on Elm Street. Uh, we have the dumpster proposed over in this area. That's the most ideal <coughs> area for circulation, be able to pick it up and be able to get back out. We have the tanks proposed over in this area. They will be able to easily access for the dispensers here, and then they'll have to pump over to these tanks here rather than splitting and having two sets of tanks, you just strategically locate one and you sacrifice for longer lines to get over to the other dispensers. Uh, obviously we'll have ADA access as required. We'll have the sidewalk, which is currently there now. We will upgrade it to fit with our site with our new curb cuts, and then we'll provide access in from the sidewalk uh, to the store straight into the main entrance uh, with no sidewalk continuing down past that. We will have utilities extended to the site, water, is accessible right at our frontage. There is an existing sewer that goes to the current facility. We'll be able to tie into that. It's sized properly for what we're putting in there, so it's just simply reconnecting up to it. Power, telephone, and gas will be extended back from Elm Street, so there's really minor disruption in the actual travelways surrounding the site with utility connections. It was mentioned also about stormwater improvements. Uh, right now, there are two existing catch basins over in this area that dump into uh, a, right here what is a sediment four bay. We show it as a wetland. Uh, we're going through conservation right now to determine whether that is truly a wetland or a stormwater feature. Uh, regardless, we're showing our new stormwater feature in front of that, so it'll be a, a belt and suspenders, if you will, approach. We're gonna obviously have fully complying stormwater controls, complying with local and state guidelines. We'll have deep sump catch basins, water quality inlets, and then infiltration structures that will provide the recharge and the water quality you're supposed to have for a facility of this size. And then also we'll have improvements to the lighting. You'll have new LED lights for the canopies and then also pole mounted around the site 
<coughs> in compliance with local guidelines and standards for safety and access around these types of facilities. And then we also show you some of the new landscaping we'll be putting in uh, around the frontage on West Main Street. We will be maintaining some of those existing plantings that are fairly mature on that Lumber Street corner. Uh, we didn't see a sense of pulling those out. They actually work nice with what we're doing here. Uh, so we did want to maintain those. Uh, that's a general overview, but certainly when you get the full application. I think. Okay. Through you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Just a real quick kind of little thing. <coughs> so I, I think this will be a great project. It's going to be great for the town. It's going to increase the services. It's going to look a lot nicer. And hopefully the flood traffic will come work. The traffic will flow better. To that point, do you feel you need the rear entrances? Because my concern is, and it happens today with the one entrance, with cars just cutting straight across, not even using your, your building. So why do you need the back exits? Uh, it is a circulation thing that it would help for truck access, it would help for vehicle access. I understand your concern that there is a possibility that somebody doesn't want to wait at a light and they want, might want to try to the cut through the, the shortest path between two distances. Yeah. Yeah. Shortest yeah. point between two distances, right? <coughs> I run into that in almost all my commercial sites. Is, so it, my yeah. question to you would be, is there an, would there be an option where we didn't have the two back exits? Could there be, I mean, like, just your th general thoughts, I'm not saying. Yeah. We, I mean, we, we looked at it from the viewpoint of the, the level of service operations and the signal, and that turns out to be five, so there shouldn't be a need to cut through, but you're right, people will do it. Um, it's happening now. We've studied it. We've counted what's happening now. We don't see that will increase, and it's a very very small number that we have documented as part of our traffic. Just throwing system. something out there. Instead of having those back exits, could you have a little road behind the, the building so that traffic could flow that way without, yeah, without getting off and on? Are you saying come through yeah. here rather than actually yeah. connect physically? Just something to think about. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. if I could just, uh, an yeah. just say the opposite. Um, I like the back exits because people can go around and come back to the light to make a left turn because I feel like it's very dangerous when people try to make a left turn out, out of the parking lot mm -hmm. onto yeah. West Main. So you want those to be exit only? Is that what you're saying? By the way, <coughs> right that is maybe. an exit only, but that has gone the way of all things zoning and rules nobody pays attention to it it's supposed to be today exit only i mean just some i'm not going to suggest what people maybe said it's a good idea too you know just exit only maybe right turn only would work mm -hmm. well like that, yeah. any further discussion because we've got some did, other items to you have you want to see the architecture yeah but just uh, let's Very do it quick because you're already okay. past the, the time allotted i'd like to add solar panels on the on, on the up there yeah <laughs> Still gonna be uh, mobile. I'm sorry. Still gonna be mobile. Still gonna be Dunkin' Donuts. No, Dunkin' Donuts. No Dunkin' Donuts. Okay. No. That's the other side. That's gonna be in store. Same owner. Okay. okay. Let's. Yeah. We have three minutes to give them, so let's <laughs> let them. Here's the front them. elevation. Here is the cafe side. So that's if you're looking to the west, this side of the building here. That's the rear elevation, and that's the elevation looking to the east. Is that elevation uh, significantly different than what it is today? That's the 495 side elevation on the bottom. Okay. So I just want to say, and I know we're like running out of time, but this is massive, and in my estimation, not at all in keeping with what <coughs> we, we'd love to see. Um, and I just really have to wonder why we need such an ex expansive gas station and what 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 is the reasoning behind such an enormous gas station mm -hmm. well, well I, I what I want to do is when the application comes in let's discuss it and, and you oh, know the and, issue has been identified and do we have proposed hours of operation uh, it, it's listed in all our presentation and everything else with the ZBA will provide you all that. What are the, what are the yeah, intended what are hours of operation? I think they're the same hours as we have now, correct? Yeah. And what are those? I think 11, they might close at 11 or something. I don't know. It's 10 or 11. 10 or 11. Uh, I, I, I don't know, I'm asking if I, if I we knew. Will, I we will get you that information. Okay. okay. Wow. Okay. I'm going to cut you off here. When do you expect to have the application? 
Uh, we were actually waiting to see what comments we get as part of the ZBA process and what other necessary comments you have. So it'll probably be after Wednesday's meeting, probably at least to see if we get, you know, what we can do in the nature of plans and comments we receive. So probably within the next two weeks, you'll probably see an application. Okay. Mr. Chairman, are they coming yeah. to design review board? Well, that I sure hope uh, so. I, yeah. Yeah. I certainly yeah. hope so. <laughs> I would suggest yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And we have three ANRs I'd like to get through. Elaine, you want to touch on? I think we've got people here for. Okay. Okay, 20 Fruit Street. Okay. You want to just briefly? Sure. Good evening, my name is Paul Boley. I'm with Field Resources. Um, unfortunately, the homeowner wasn't able to make it, so he'd asked me to come, and so here I am. We're uh, dividing the existing parcel into two buildable lots and one non-buildable lot um, along the zone line. Um, ultimately, to maybe future, uh, to market that with the uh, land behind them or to the right of them that is of the same zone across Martin. Okay. Questions? Uh, we haven't seen the updated, but you have the updated, and that's what he's going to It's identified as a non okay. So for our viewers at home, if we approve it, then they, get, they can start right away. Uh, if we don't approve it, they'd have to wait 30 days and the town clerk will sign it. Uh, 20 days from when it was submitted. So the approval not required, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Then it would get recorded and the lots would be created. Okay. So they're creating one additional building lot. Further comments, questions? I'm just trying to figure out where exactly this is. Warren Road, that's a part of it. So is it the, um, the farm property there? It is, I mean, it's a pretty large, um, you know, very proud of Right, and there's that. No, it should be closer to Wood Street. Yeah, closer to Wood Street. We're right before where the North Street comes out, right? It's so it's all woods there on the, right now, or no? There's, there's a large home with three buildings on site, and oh, sorry, it's a circle driveway. No, if before you get what to the address, it's, it's got a, a small one. circle. It's not a big broad one. circle. It's a oh. dual entry. Okay. Currently, to a is it Mary Pratt's house? No, no. it's not. No. It's not anywhere near. <coughs> it's further, <coughs> it's closer to the intersection to Wood Street. It's not as near it's to North Street as you're thinking. Third. It's not, where you it's get not to the, the Pratt side. property, which is right on. Well, before that is the Wood Street Fields, right? And then, mm -hmm. and then it's before that. Oh, way before that. Yeah. <coughs> it's closer to closer West Main Street. Street. It's, past, it's past Cunningham. From okay. Coming from North Street. Yeah, it's between Cunningham and Wood. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. So okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now, my, okay. my concern is with this. So they're, I mean, they're going to be able to do whatever they they, they want. Um, but there are some wetlands there, and it's a very congested area behind there where there is a private road that goes back, or an old public road that goes back, cart road. Um, and I don't entirely understand. <coughs> one house, the house that's there is staying, and you're adding another. The house that is, all the structures that are currently there, other than I believe one. No, I believe even the small shed are all going to be on the parent tract that is still probably going to end up number 20, nonetheless. Um, to the right of that, there's a portion. The south side. Um, it's the same as in your path. Lot two. Yes, to the south side of the lot along Warren. Um, a, a lot that wraps around the existing home um, will be, I mean, substantially. Yeah, is Warren Road a, a public way, or is that one of the? Right. Uh, that's a, it's I have a, to tell you, I live over there. I don't even know where it's Warren Road. I'm like, it's, it's, it's a 12 foot wide it's private. Right? I'm like, what? That's a, actually a utility line, but it's, okay. so they provide the required amount of frontage on Street. So you're yeah. not using Warren Road for frontage. Okay. Yeah. And I think Warren would have, I mean, certainly a, a longer path 
through your board before it was ever considered anything that was. <laughs> so I have a question for you, Lane. Obviously, I thought I always thought approval not required was because you have existing um, street required frontage. So here, we do have frontage. They, 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 they do have the they frontage. Do. They have 100 feet yeah. of frontage on Wood Street. Right. Okay. I mean, excuse me, Food Street. So both. So they have will the required frontage so for both that lots. back. Right. But even portion. though they're going to build the house behind another one. Right. It doesn't matter where on the but, lot. Well, I'm just thinking, what what's to prevent somebody with 20 acres to do that and just build houses behind and behind and behind and not have a public road? As long as each lot has the required amount of frontage on a street, you can configure the lots however okay. you choose. Ultimately, it's often easier. I mean, just from a permit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just trying to understand it. I would put a road. Thank I you. mean, if we had that situation, yeah. we would have put a road with a cul-de-sac and had a bunch of lots. I mean. Yeah. I mean, if the homeowner wanted that. I mean, right. That's mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's a really nice lot to, to have to be tucked in back there. Yeah. It's really, mm -hmm. that's a sweet spot, actually. Yeah, actually. Would be a really Any nice other questions? <laughs> I'm not sure where the driveway will be. I'm guessing over the frontage. The driveway is required <laughs> to be over the designated frontage in the zoning bylaw. So it's like it right along the edge? That's it would probably be closer to, to the basically Warren Road, the, the Abutters driveway. I didn't, know, I didn't realize that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we've got a enough. I will motion. Uh, I'll move <laughs> that we approve. <laughs> this. One point Second. Yeah. Any further discussion? I do. I do have a quick question. Just about the the frontage. It looks like less than 100 feet. Of the frontage. If you add the numbers together, it does equal. It, it, it's over 100. It's actually so usually equal. like 102 or. Mm -hmm. So we don't need 200 foot of frontage. <laughs> so residence A. So it's 100 feet. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, let's take a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain? Nay. And my vote is based just on density. Uh, next item, thank you. Uh, Legacy Farms North. Good evening. Uh, we're here for an NR plan for the next parcel we will be selling to Fulte. It's along the north road and it's the next phase of development. Sorry, you share your name. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Something to wonder. Any uh, <coughs> discussion? How'd the first phase go, Roy? Say again? How'd the first phase go? Is everything going well? I think plan? it's going extremely well. Actually, their the second phase is the third. Third, yeah. Sales are going extremely well. I think they're uh, moving along. So like just a, a side note, I was there um, Sunday yesterday, and I drove down, and it was raining, and the first um, train on the right was completely blocked. <coughs> it was right over. I think it needs to be cleared I'll, out. I'll something. bring that to their Thank attention. You. Okay, can we get a motion? I'll move the, I'll move the plan as proposed. Second. <coughs> further discussion? All in favor? No, hold on. Sorry. Sorry. I'm a little slow right now. Long yeah. meeting. Can you explain exactly what we're voting? <coughs> it's we're voting to release the parcel. In other words, these parcels have already be, been identified, and now we're voting to release the Just parcel. Just a formality. To, yes. Parcel 3, which oh. is oh. top of the hill. Right. right. I'm fine with formality. Thank okay. you. Okay. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, so carried. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, two other things. Once we get this plan, we'll record this. But prior to doing that, we need to bring in Form K, which Elaine is familiar with. We're going to fill that out. We, we're going to need you to endorse that also. It's a formality that you use. And the next thing we're going to do is give Elaine an updated plan showing the additional restricted land areas. Okay. We've got to get ourselves to 500 acres soon. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Are you asking the board to vote on the release of the lot now, or when yeah. when you submit the form? How would you I'd like rather to do it? <laughs> the I form. didn't know what you were asking. Yeah. <laughs> no, we, I'll bring the form in. Okay. Can I pick up that plan tomorrow? Okay, we can add it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, approval not required. Cobbler's way. Patiently wait. Again, I request a waiver. And I think you know Brian. Um, in, in 2016, the board in, endorsed a plan which swapped a couple pieces of land for the driveway for lot seven. Um, through inadvertence at the time, that plan was not recorded. 
it was a swap of roughly 900 square feet given to that lot from the open space and then on the back ends of lot seven and eight a thousand square feet became open space so that was the purpose of the swap which the board endorsed that plan however again the plan was never recorded so uh, is working with the town from the viewpoint of dedicating or conveying the open space we have to have the proper plan of record so we're just simply asking that you resign the same plan which Mark Rodon has provided to you I will make a motion to sign that I second well, any discussion uh, so where does the fees come into play on this oh, they're requesting a waiver okay. right. um, I'd like to argue against waiving the fee um, just a, a sense of uh, proprietariness. It's uh, something that you guys sh should have handled, and um, there's a lot of discussion at the time about Cobbler's Way and discussion back and <coughs> forth. And as a member of the board, I think we did our due diligence, and I just like to see uh, us not waive the fee. What is the fee? How much? We provided five hundred dollars for the fee, so we're asking that you waive that because you're really, really doing assigning the same plan. So they've, they've already paid. Did they pay the, the first time? Did they pay the we, You the have this check, but I understand it's being held, so it hasn't been deposited yet. Okay. Yeah, that so it's, it's waiving a second fee or waiving the initial fee? No. It's waiving the second fee. It's waiving the second fee, so they have the, the original first. fee is being I, applied. I think this project has million dollar homes on it and $500. Uh, is this a pittance? Do we, do we not have the existing side right. plan? Yeah. No. It, it was signed. It was never recorded. You have to record the plan within six months. So you months. just don't have it. You don't have it. So we have to have you re-sign it. Yeah. They're turning at the oh, time. Oh, six not, months. I got you. For some reason, did not get it recorded. It was supposed to be recorded. It did not get done. So was the applicant's so attorney? Yes. Or yes. Attorney, or, yeah, so. Tom, I mean, typically you brought it back at the end of the six months, you right. probably would have signed it. You know, we wouldn't have to go through the process, but since it's been long, we were asked to file an application. Right. I was under <coughs> the impression that it got, all got taken care of, okay. but it never did. And then when we went to turn the land, you know, uh, over the halt, then we realized that, you know, we had some other things that never got done. Yeah. Elaine, it so is, isn't it curious that we haven't cashed the check, though? No, it's a recent no. check. They just no, no, no. Oh, <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. I'm like, what? So why don't we make a motion <coughs> to... Thank you. We make a motion to waive the fee. A approve and waive the fee. And then if somebody wants to make an amendment, we can do it that way. If somebody... So we have a motion to approve. I moved the plan. Okay, so we have a second. Second. Uh, discussion? I think we shouldn't waive the fee. So you uh, want to let's make a yeah. let then make a, uh, uh, <coughs> a friendly motion to not waive the fee, and get the vote of the board, and then bring it. Forward. I make a friendly amendment that we don't waive the fee. I am willing to entertain the amendment. Discussion. I I just don't feel yes, passionately uh, either way. Discussion on the motion only. Discussion on the motion is if if we were going to do anything, why don't we, on the amendment is why don't we charge a half fee if we were going to so I mean if Frank is that, that I'd be open to that <laughs> uh, so I, my one comment is is that this feels like a a, um, a goodwill piece it's yes. not I, I, I just I don't know that the fee it makes any helps us particularly it doesn't hurt the applicant either but so I, don't I, 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 I would argue to we have one motion fee. let's vote on this motion yay or nay and then if you want to propose a half fee but let's we're 22 minutes after yeah. we're supposed to be done. So what are we, we're voting for the, the amendment? To, the amendment. To not waive okay. the fee. To not waive the fee. Uh, any further discussion on that? All in favor of the amendment? Say aye. aye. I'm Opposed? Nay. 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 Abstain? <coughs> so denied. Do so you want to make a motion? <coughs> no, no okay. I don't. Okay. So we can make a motion. We have the motion, the motion already on the table. Discussion. <coughs> Any further discussion? Only because I just want to ask these guys a quick question because okay. I drove through it yesterday as well. <laughs> what do you, uh, what? you have two. Do you have uh, just two lots under construction? Those are the last two. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Last two. Okay. Let's take a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Abstain. So carried. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you.
Thank you, gentlemen. And I'm going to move I, the rest of the stuff. I could see the next I just A motion to which? Yeah. Motion, yeah. motion, yeah. second. Yeah. No, no, I think we have a first. Uh, yeah. Can I get a vote? All in uh, favor of adjourning? Oh, I am so in favor of adjourning. Second. I think I just went on record that I think it's a bad policy to have a traditional item. Somebody do a presentation. I mean, we don't use this event. I'm sorry, say it again. I didn't hear you. Well, they are on the, the thing if you've done it. Right. Well, the, we, can't do, we can't do a formal thing until they have Hey, I want to tell you. I did. A but we don't traditionally do that unless this happens. Oh, yes. Good evening. I did. Anecdotally. Yes, we did. And it was unanimous. Thank you, Kobe.